Big game for Cleveland as they trail the three co-leaders in the AFC Central by one game. This place is really alive. It's ignited when Cleveland comes in. The toughest ticket in all of football, perhaps, the Cleveland at Pittsburgh game. Only 54,000 seats at Three Rivers. Larry Anderson is back deep for the Steelers. Cox kicks off for Cleveland, and here is Anderson at the six. 20. Look out. 30. Penalty marker. Penalty marker as Bruce Huther. Reception in his last 88 throws. Pollard at 5-6 a rush and Franco Harris on target for a 1,000-yard rushing year again in the backfield. Starworth and Swan, and aren't they something? Both healthy, both having great seasons. Cunningham's having his best at tight end. The offensive line's been crashing people, and the Steelers lead the league in rushing right now. First and 10 for the Cleveland Browns at their 15-yard line, or for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Handoff to Pollard. Trying the left side of the Cleveland defense. Pollard gets ahead to the 17-yard line, and defensive end Marshall Harris knocked him down, number 90. Cleveland goes primarily with the 3-4. Marshall Harris, Henry Bradley, and the veteran Lyle Elzato up front. Linebackers very active, very fast, good. Jackson Ambrose and Clay Matthews, who might be their best at the outside and the right side. At the corners, Ron Bolton, the veteran. Hanford Dixon, their number one draft choice. He's a rookie. He'll be tested. So... The Browns now line up with a second and eight play coming against them. Bradshaw gives to Pollard. Cuts back up. Caught by Clay Matthews. And another short gain for the Steelers as the Cleveland Browns shut down consecutive running plays, John. Don, I think you're going to see the key to the ball game right in the middle of the line. Number 52, Webster, is thought to be the best center in the game. Now, the whole key is whether or not Henry Bradley can stalemate it. If, he can, if they can keep the great offensive line for the Steelers from pulling and trapping. They trap you coming out of the locker room, getting off the bus. You can see Corson comes around, gets to the linebacker. But remember, they've run the ball twice for five yards. The, really, the Browns are doing everything to stop their run today. They look for the run to be the way Pittsburgh wants to control this game if they can. Now, Steeler quarterback Bradshaw throws in the overshoots. John Stallworth turning out against the strong safety Clarence Scott. And, Don, that's what they want to force Terry Bradshaw to do. Remember, he doesn't like to sit around and be patient. He's not a patient type guy. Right now, they're running the ball so effectively they have to keep doing it. But it's not Terry's personality over the last six years to run the ball effectively. He says everybody out for a long one. When the receivers get tired now, we'll run the ball. And their personality's changing a little there. I don't think it helps Bradshaw. Well, they didn't get far in that first series. Now they're going to punt the ball. Here's Craig Colquitt standing back at his six-yard line. Dino Hall, activated by the Browns, is back to receive the punt. Dino takes it at his 36. Gets out to the 45. Good return by Dino Hall. They're happy to have him back. Johnny Durden came down to cover on special teams. And now let's look at the Cleveland Brown offense. And there is the man coming out, 17, Brian Seip. Mike Pruitt and the former Heisman Trophy winner, Charles White, in the backfield. Dave Logan playing hurt, but he's been tough against Pittsburgh at one wide receiver, Rutgers the other. Ozzy Newsom, a standout tight end, good offensive line. Deacon, Jackson, DeLeon, Delano Lear, and Cody Risen. It's first and ten, Cleveland. The Browns start off with good field position at their 44. The big back, Mike Pruitt. He crashes ahead for a gain of five, maybe six yards, got close to midfield. Donnie Shell, the strong safety, was on the tackle along with Dwayne Woodruff. The front four for the Steelers has two first-year men, Coors and Goodman, were drafted last year, didn't play, though, out in the injured reserve. They're at the defensive ends, and the veterans at tackle, Green and Dunn. Jack Ham is back, and he's something. Jack Lambert in the middle, Robin Cole on the right side. There isn't a better trio than those. <laughs> Woodruff and Blunt at the corners. Thomas and Shell are the safeties for Pittsburgh. It's second down and four now for Cleveland. Site goes to the run. Mike Pruitt takes it right at the Pittsburgh defense and takes it down to the Pittsburgh 45-yard line. First All right. Down. Pittsburgh's been noted as a team that you can't run against. Well, that's a... That's a reputation they developed over the last seven or eight years, and very few people have tried to run against them in the past in the past year or two. And uh, the thought is around the as we see Pruitt, real good offensive surge. We see DeLeon just moved the linebacker right off the line of scrimmage. They picked up a first down with six yards of carry, just moving people off the line. I think people could, can run on Pittsburgh. Well, Cleveland's been doing it, John. They, as you point out, six yards of carry on consecutive rushes, and now they're down to the 45 of the first down. Here's Charles White. 
Ooh. He almost broke it. Charles White gets inside the 40 yard line and down to the 39. They like Charles White. He's a durable guy, 190 pounds. They say there isn't a better blocking back on the Cleveland team. Nobody sticks his nose in there quite like Charles. And they didn't draft him as a blocking no. back either, uh, so that's just an added plus. So the Browns have gone to the run on their three plays from scrimmage, and they've done well. That one got eight. It's second down and a long two right now for Cleveland. No score first quarter. Great day in Pittsburgh. Temperature in the 60s, clear sunny skies. Mike Pruitt, the fullback, first down, Cleveland Browns. Browns are moving him out. Gary Dunn on the tackle. Nothing fancy either, Don. That's four straight running plays, two first downs, nice consistent six, seven yards a crack. Uh, it's a little scary when it gets that easy that quick. Does it stay that easy, though? Uh, not for long. <laughs> not here, not three rivers. Sam Ritigliano coming in with a bang it right at him game plan, and it's been working. It is first and 10 for Cleveland. 34 yard line of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Charles White down to the 30 at about three. Let's take a look. Now, this is five plays in a, in a row where at the point of attack there has been a hole. And if this offensive line, which is thought to be on a, on a par with Pittsburgh's, plays as well as they have the first five plays, look at the way they get off the line of scrimmage. They're into other people's territory. Any back can run if he doesn't get touched till he gets past the line of scrimmage. John Bryan Sutt was saying before the game that he doesn't like to throw it 50 times a game. He says when he throws it that much, he is the offense. He'd rather control the offense. He wants to run, and he's been doing that successfully at second and seven. Down close to the 30. Mike Pruitt turns wide. There's Lambert after him. And a penalty marker comes flying in off the play. Lambert runs down Mike Pruitt. So now we'll wait. Ben Dreith and the official call here. 9.58 to play in the first quarter. A hold against Cleveland. That'll hurt. That's so much for that theory. Uh, that run at six yards a crack isn't good if you, if you get one penalty throughout the the course of the drive so you can bet Brian's going to fire the ball and I think during the course of the day you'll see him throw it to Newsom or anybody he can if he can get a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Donnie Shell. Uh, strong safeties are holding offense number 25. I, I don't think you're going to see them try blunt side very often but they will they've got a rookie cornerback over here in Washington they'll try him some and they'll also try to get the ball to Newsom in the middle. Right now they have a passing down second down and 14 for Cleveland the ball at the Pittsburgh 37 yard line. There's a first quarter score New Orleans jumping out in front of Philadelphia. Draw play. Charles White looks for some room and he has some room. He turns the corner now he has a problem and bails out. Well short of the first down Wayne Woodruff who's starting at the left corner 49 and is graded out as Pittsburgh's best defensive back this year. Closed in on him. We'll watch it again. All right, it's a certain passing down, and, and what's Pittsburgh trying to do? They're trying to get to Brian Sipe. If you can force him to make a move early, fine. He's trying to get some of the heat off of his him, himself by giving him a simple little draw play. It breaks at the point of attack. The play looked like it was going to go for more than it did. White has to settle for five yards, but they do. You know, third and nine, that, we can make that. A lot of patterns get that for him. Well, they're going to run one right now. It's third down and nine for the Cleveland Browns. No score in the first quarter. Sipe checks things out. Greg Pruitt, a great pass catcher coming out of the backfields on the playing field now, along with Mike Pruitt. That's Greg Pruitt, 34, swinging out. He's over the middle. Tip ball. Pittsburgh has it. Robin Cole intercepts. So the Steeler defense comes up with a big play. A dirt Winston came down with the ball. 53. The ball was tipped, though, as you saw at the line of scrimmage. And so the Cleveland drive is stopped. John. And Don, I'll tell you what forced the turnover is just a great pass rush. Now, Brian Sipe is back is turned to the man that forces the play. You cannot see from behind yourself. Cole comes in, gets a piece of his legs, forces a turnover, and Pittsburgh's got it back. That was big Joe Green who got a hand on the ball. It was up for grabs, and the Steelers come down with it. Quick with the ball after the interception by Dirt Winston. Bradshaw makes a look. That's a rip out to the 30 yard line. He got about five. Franco comes out of the backfield and catches the ball. He's having a fine year, Franco Harris. He's usually a late season player. He gets cooking in the playoffs. Come. <laughs> He's an all season player. He's an all season player. He starts a little bit slow, but he always finishes fast. 
the whole team things are almost going too good for Pittsburgh right now everybody's healthy people like Cunningham the tight end they're having their best seasons Woody Woodenhofer said before the game that the secondary on defense is playing the best it ever has here in Pittsburgh we saw that interception here's a handoff now pitch back quick toss to Franco Harris and the Browns are there good defensive play Robert L Jackson 56 came up penalty marker down and it, it, if they get an opportunity they'll take it they're holding on the offense whoops Five yards, but an automatic first down. You know what? That, I'm interested to, to see who that penalty is against because let's just listen. I want to see the number because I think it's from a defensive lineman trying to keep their people from pulling, trapping. Say going in, they're First and ten, Pittsburgh ball. And they, I say tackling them is about, about as effective way as you can you can do if you don't get called. That's about the only way you stop Mike Webster, the All-Pro center for Pittsburgh. Here's Bradshaw, play fake and throw it. Long man is open, ball is tipped. Cleveland loses an interception. Ooh, John Starworth had a hand on the ball, and Ron Bolton and Hanford Dixon laying back there had a play on the ball, and Dixon lost it. It looked to me like Ambrose had a play on the ball also. Up front. Excellent coverage secondarily wise. Bradshaw's gone 90 passes without an interception. Well, that one he was. <laughs> Very lucky. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, he can throw that one again. It'll be intercepted every time. All right, we see, we see two Browns get their hands on the ball. None of them come up with it. Don Good in perfect position. Second down and 10. Handoff. Franco Harris breaks a tackle, breaks another, gets to the 42 yard line. He got seven. Alzado knocked him down. Lyle's playing with a calf injury. He's had some training camp. But you don't get him out of the lineup. Franco comes out and Russell Davis comes in. It's going to be third and short yardage now. Very impressive numbers these Pittsburgh Steelers have compiled after losing their first two. Look at that one. And when you run the ball that effectively, it puts a burden on the quarterback because he knows he has to start moving the ball on the ground. Uh, if you go up top and you're not effective, everybody says, why didn't you run it? Both teams have been running the ball. Ryan Sipes' only throw was picked off, and Pittsburgh has it now. Third and four. Here's a quick toss. Great hit by Cleveland secondary. A strong safety, Clarence Scott, came up and popped the ball free. Perfect Starworth timing. had his hands on it. Perfect it timing. Was. It's the only way you can make a play on a ball like that. Stallworth very seldom, even when he is hit, drops the ball if he gets his hands on it first. He's having a great year. Leads the National Football League in reception yardage, John Stallworth, averaging 19 yards a catch for the 25 he's caught. There's Colquitt ready to punt. Or Greg Colquitt on the field to punt for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Dino Hall is back for the Cleveland Browns. They don't. He didn't kick it too far, but they don't return many of his. They'd be turned very few, that's right. He didn't get much of that one, though. Hall's got to handle a bad hop, though. Over the shoulder, back in the 19, and the Pittsburgh Steelers are there. Calvin Sweeney and Tunch Ilkin came down to cover. So with the hop, Colquitt gets some good yardage. Guys starting to mix it up after the play. They will do that in this series. That will happen. <laughs> We're going to be back at Three Rivers Stadium with the Browns on offense right after this. There's Chuck Noll, the, the Pittsburgh coach who leads the league in championship rings. Got two when he was a player with the Browns. Of course, four here at Pittsburgh. Nick Lowry kicked a field goal from 52 yards out in Oakland. It's trailing Kansas City 3-0. Eagles just tied it up down in New Orleans. Ron Jaworski to Keith Kreftley from 11 yards out. 7-7 game there. No score on the board here at Three Rivers, 7.58 to play in the first quarter. High formation, Charles White drops into the deep back. And here is the give for the first back through, the fullback on a first down play. Mike Pruitt takes it out to the 22-yard line where Gary Dunn knocked him down for the Steelers. Well, you can just about read Brian's mind, Don. He's, he wants to keep the heat off of himself throwing the ball. In order to do that, he has to. It's not establish a running game. It's, he has to establish that he can effectively run. And uh, they have early in the ball game. They really ran effectively the first possession, remember, when they kept ripping up those six yarders, got down close. Then the interception by Dirt Winston stopped the drive. 
No scores. It's second down and five coming up. People jumping early on the Pittsburgh defense. Charles White breaks free. And White turns the corner and gets all the way out across midfield. But there is a penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. Could go against the Steelers, though. Well, I think it is. I think it's defensive offsides. They jumped the gun a little. I think Jack Ham jumped it. They'll refuse it. I think the impressive thing is to see the holes that the Brown offensive line is opening right off that. Decline the penalty. First down. 26-yard gain for Charles White and the Cleveland Browns. You can see Terry. He's sitting there saying, man, I just want to get up top. Let me go. I've got two horses out there in Stallworth and Swan. I want to fire it down the field. And remember, he is one of the few quarterbacks who does control the offense, and he calls his own plays. Both of these. It's fewer and fewer, isn't it, calling their own right. plays now? It's first and ten for the Cleveland Browns at their 49-yard line. Ryan Seip looking deep, throws out. Mike Pruitt comes out of the backfield. Cornerback takes him on Dwayne Woodruff and knocks him down at the 45-yard line. Good game, though. They got six on the play. And it was such a, a well-run pattern by Pruitt. You know, you can throw the ball 40 times a game, but because you throw it a lot doesn't mean you throw it well. These guys design their patterns so well. Uh, Bradshaw is more of a north and south thrower. He fires the ball down the field very seldom to his backs. On the other hand, Sipe uses all five receivers when he's in. Well, Sipe is sending Ricky Feature out wide to the right now. Reggie Rucker is on the left flank. Second down and three for Cleveland. White, knocked down. Robin Cole got him. Robin Cole has made two big plays. Well, they got the people on this Pittsburgh roster. Cole was a number one back in 77 out of New Mexico. He was a number one, and he was a number one because of his size, his strength, and his speed. He's turned out to be an outstanding linebacker, as Pittsburgh has traditionally had. Robin comes out of the game now. They go to the extra defensive back, Anthony Washington. Third down and eight after the loss on that play. Seip, here's a blitz and the strong safety. The ball is tipped away from Greg Pruitt coming out of the backfield. Donnie Shell almost got to Brian Seip. Well, you know where Donnie Shell plays. It's a safety blitz. They're trying to find any way they can to get to Seip. They know if they give him time, he's going to beat them. They're doing it with blitzes right now. Well, I know, John, the Browns feel that if the Steelers don't get the pass rush in their front four, they start to come with almost indiscriminate blitzing. They really shoot people. I think they'll do it early, but they won't do it much more throughout the ball game. If you establish, you will. A lot of times you don't have to very often. Jim Smith is back now. Here's Steve Cox, a rookie from Arkansas, having a great year. Hunting the ball for the Browns. Didn't get it too far ahead of hurry. Does take a Cleveland hop, and Jim Smith's going to let it roll, and the Browns are going to down it down close to the goal line. Cox does his job very well, and the Steelers get the ball, but they're pinned back inside their five, and we come back to Three Rivers Stadium. Set to go back here at Three Rivers Stadium, where the Pittsburgh Steelers starting out for the third time in the game and way, way back. And we like to be in Pittsburgh because this is the most famous address in pro football, Three Rivers Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, home of the champions, the team that dominated the game in the 70s. Steelers going for a 10th consecutive winning season. Hand off to Franco Harris, and the Browns are there. Franco might have gotten two, but little more. As Bradshaw tries to just move the ball out with a running play to get some room to operate. Two is not a bad play when, you can't, when you're not moving anybody off the line. None of the running backs have been able to find a hole. Let's take a view of it as Franco would, right from the back of the end zone. Here's Harris looking for a crack anywhere, finds nothing but a Brown in his way. Eddie Johnson, the backup linebacker, banged up on the special teams play going off to be attended to. It's second down and eight. Bradshaw, not shy, is going to gun it over the middle. He's got a man there. Benny Cunningham is tight end, and Big Benny is still doing it. He's out across the 20. And out to the 26-yard line. So Bradshaw goes to the throw from his own end zone and gets a 22-yard gain. You know, most quarterbacks will go back and say, fine, I'll throw a nice soft little pass, something safe out in the flat if I don't hit it. So what? You can see what Bradshaw is looking at. Now, there is a lot of congestion in the middle of the field, but he finds Cunningham, puts it right where it has to be thrown. They get out of a hole, and they're on the move. 
Evans, 260 pounds at tight end. You got a haul down, having his best year. That's his 21st catch, and he's never blocked better than he has this That's year. That's right. They've been waiting for him to play the way they expected him to when they drafted him for about four years, and he's finally doing it. Big Benny Cunningham, 89 at tight end. Bradshaw wants some more of that. Out in the flat he goes. There's Lynn Swan. But the Cleveland defense is there. Ron Bolton brings him down at the 30, a gain of about four yards. Swan had an interesting observation about the Steelers. He said one reason people play so well is because everybody behind you on this team is so good. If you don't play well, you're not going to be on the field. Yeah, they don't handle things. Uh, they don't distribute any verbal abuse here. They just sit you on the bench. And I think Sidney Thornton is a perfect example, Don. Pollard comes in, he's got the job, and I don't know who's going to unseat him. They really like the job Pollard's done. He's lining up now as a wing back to the left. Very good blocker. He gives to the Steeler offense what Blyer used to give to them. Able to block for Franco. And this is Franco going the other way. Big guy can motor. He licks it out across now. Runs ahead for another Pittsburgh first down. Now while we have a moment, let's swing back to New York and Brian Gumble, right? Okay, Don, out at Shea Stadium, the Jets have moved out ahead of the Patriots. Richard Todd's 11th touchdown pass of the year, a 17-yarder to Jerome Barkham and kept an 80-yard drive, seven long Jets. Don? So the Jets moving right along at Shea. There's some good blocking on the last play, and we'll watch it. Well, I mean, when you throw the ball effectively on first down, and remember Bradshaw effectively completed two balls to get them out of a hole, you get help like that from Swan once the fullback gets past the line of scrimmage. He's got some. Now we go to live action, first and ten. Bradshaw stands in and throws it. Coming out of the backfield with big Russell Davis, but he was unloaded upon by Clay Matthews. <laughs> big Russell wasn't quite big enough there. Big Russell's been running well. He's got 6.6 .6 yards of rush for the Steelers. Everybody's got good numbers when you lead the league in rushing. Well, you know, they just take for granted the depth that Pittsburgh has. They don't really take a look at it, but when you have fellas like Hawthorne who's not getting any playing time, uh, Franco's been a little slow coming around, Sidney Thornton isn't getting any playing time. These are top, top rate backs that aren't playing. And the big, big factor that they all point out is the fact that all these top players are healthy now at Pittsburgh. That was not the case last year. They had so many injuries. Now we have second down coming up for the Steelers. Second and 10 at their 43. No score in this game. Here's a throw. Oh, almost intercepted. Penalty marker is down. Judson Flint enters the fifth defensive back. Might have been pushing somebody. Well, that was just alert. That was an alert call by the official. Very seldom will that play get called. He was in perfect position to see it. Flint did grab on to Swan. He could only get one hand up to touch the ball. Defense, pass interference. That's a first down. Sure is. They didn't give a number, so you're, we're not sure it was Judson Flint, but he was jumping up and down when the call came in. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> it was Judson. So the Steelers beneficiaries of the interference call get another first down and they are now on the Cleveland side of the field. Down to the Browns 43 yard line. No score in the first quarter 427 to play in it. Bradshaw looking to fire. He does. And there's Lynn Swan down inside the 30. And the Steelers rip off another big gainer. 16 yards and a Steeler first down. Terry is doing what he loves to do. He mentioned you know when you're throwing the ball a lot it doesn't seem to matter whether you miss one or you miss two. But if you're running the ball a lot, you never get the feel you can always hit somebody. Now, he's got Swan running perfect patterns, putting the ball where it has to be thrown. There are no defensive backs in the game that can cover this passing combination when they're in operation. Bradshaw back, perfect set. Next case. Bolton must have been playing way off him. Yeah, it doesn't matter. He better. <laughs> now the two wide outs are to the right side for Pittsburgh. First and 10 to the run. Here's Pollard. Story. He came in here as an 11th round draft choice, Frank Pollard, a couple years ago. Said he thought he'd be able to tell his grandchildren one day that he was on the Steeler roster, at least for training camp. He never thought he'd make the team. He's hurting. Pollard yeah. has to come off. The uh, shoulder. Sidney Thornton's going to get a shot here, John. He had some problems holding on to the ball against Kansas City. And Opening game of the season didn't hit the field the next couple times out. Yeah, he really hasn't played any uh, significant amount since. After the ball is dead, it's second down. 
unless they kick the players out, it really doesn't do much harm. Yeah, that's a push. Personal fouls on both teams, so it'll go to second down and six from the 24. Don, I can remember when Doug Atkins was in his prime. We used to have a guy that we'd try to get him in a fight with, and we didn't mind losing the fellow that fought him. If we could get, <laughs> if we could get Atkins out of there. I'll guarantee the guy that fought him didn't win the fight. <laughs> that's right, too. Big Doug watching this down in Tennessee. Here is a handoff to Sidney Thornton, and from way off the play, a penalty marker comes flying in. Some little altercation between uh, Swan and uh, Bolton. Guys are taking this one serious. Personal foul against the Cleveland Browns. Steelers will get another penalty mark off against Cleveland as you see the ball go all the way down now inside the 10 yard line. Pollard was cut on the defense number 28 at the Bolton. first down. Carl Ford. Word from the sideline that Frank Pollard received a cut in his left arm. It's being attended to. He will be back. L.A. Rams, they're on a roll right now after a slow start. Frank Correll just kicked a field goal. Atlanta having its problems. First and goal for Pittsburgh. Bradshaw looking into the end zone. He throws. He's got a man. That's John Stallworth. Touchdown, Steelers. <laughs> hey, that's vintage Bradshaw. We've got somebody hurt down there. Looks like Stallworth to me. They can't afford to lose him. John Starworth goes into the end zone and then doesn't get up, so he's being attended to now. A very key part of the Pittsburgh success this season. Every season he's been here. Boy, these guys, they, they vary their patterns so well. Starworth was covered originally. Bradshaw waits for him to stop and go outside. He moves it outside. Matthews has no play on Starworth, and he easily goes in and score. Gary Bradshaw went out to check on John, came back clapping his hands, indicating he thinks he's okay. And that's good news. It looked like he like not up yet though. Yeah, it looked like he got a, a rib. Don't want to play doctor, but that's you know I did see a man. That got a bigger ovation than the touchdown when he got up and ran off. John Stallworth. Dave Trout in the game now for the extra point. Steelers got down the field with the mix of the run, the pass, and the penalties. 97-yard drive, the Steelers' longest of this season. Nine plays it took them. Trout from the University of Pittsburgh, a rookie, kicks the extra point. And so the Steelers on a 97-yard drive. Bradshaw to Starworth on the payoff. Go out in front, 7 to nothing. And we'll be back after this. John Stallworth just got in the end zone, first score of the game, and the Pittsburgh Steelers have gone out in front here, seven to nothing. And it was vintage Bradshaw the whole way. I mean, he's doing what he wanted to do. I think they've stopped their running, and Bradshaw was almost happy about it, I believe. Uh, but that, that gives him an opportunity to operate, sitting down there with Art Malone. Trout kicks off and kicks off deep into the end zone. They're going to bring it out. Charles White will bring it out, and he gets out to the 29-yard line. Good return, 31 yards by Charles White. Mr. Bradshaw putting up a touchdown throw. Bradshaw, eighth touchdown pass of this season. Starworth only had the wind knocked out of him. He knocks some wind out of the Cleveland Browns getting in the end zone. He does, and, and <laughs> he and Swan run patterns so beautifully. It's just, uh, it's an art to watch. Some combination, Swan and Stallworth, and the guys that are behind him can play. Jim Smith gets in there. He can play superb football. It's first and 10 now for Cleveland. Ball at the Browns 29. Right to the run and right up the middle with the run goes Mike Pruitt. Gary Dunn, 67, made the tackle for Pittsburgh, and so far through the first five weeks, he has graded out as their number one defensive lineman, Gary Dunn. The 
man that really has given that's given the Steelers something fits over the years is Logan. He is not in the lineup at this time. And when they lose him, they lose a big dimension, the Browns. Yeah, Logan has a rib injury. Tremendous player, particularly against Pittsburgh. Had a sleep sitting up one week. But pained him that much. Here's Mike Pruitt catching the ball. The Steelers close in, but Pruitt gets ahead for good yardage. On a second down and six play, he gets ahead across the 35, out to about the 36. He'll be short of the first down. And the burden they put on Jack Ham to play that screen, they had nobody else even out in the area. He stood off the blocker, forced Pruitt to cut to the inside, and when he did, the pursuit caught him. Just a, just a great play. Alex, go back. This is Brian Gumble in New York out at Shea Stadium. The Patriots have tied the Jets. Mosey Tatupu, Charlie White's blocking back, taking it in from three yards. He's deadlocked at seven. Let's go back to Three Rivers. Some of those Trojans doing good today. Tatupu, he's the game for the New England Patriots right now. Charles White is out of the backfield for the Cleveland Browns. Third down and three coming up. Brian Seip looking to throw. Out of the backfield is Mike Pruitt, the fullback. He's inside the 50, down inside the 45-yard line, and down to the 44. You don't see this very often in Pittsburgh. It's a blown assignment. It's almost unheard of here. Pruitt comes out of the backfield, a little crossing pattern with the two receivers to his side. As he comes out, no one in the area. Just a, just a well-designed play to take advantage of a, of a foul up. The brain trust of the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's Dick Hoke. Dick Hoke, yeah, is a great runner here for a lot of years. How about Perlis? He went from 270 to 195. I didn't even recognize him today. Training down George Perlis. Side pump taken, gets some time. It's running out, though, in pursuit is Bob Coors. Coors gets him. He's the fastest Steeler defensive lineman. <laughs> and this is what they've said that course does give them. They've got a lineman that can run a quarterback down. We saw Sipe in a good situation. Excellent pass protection. We see Green. When you've got two people to take Joe Green and knocked him right on his prat, here comes Course trying to catch Sipe, and eventually he does. That's good speed. Six foot five, 250, running down a quarterback. He was out all last year, Bob Coors, with a knee injury. Injured reserve as a rookie was drafted in the second round. They think he's going to add a whole lot to this team. He has already started last week in the win at New Orleans. Second down and less than a yard now for Cleveland, though. Brown's getting the big gainers. Here's a pitch back to Charles White. Mike threw it blocks, and Charles White comes inside the 30, inside the 25 yard line. Free ball. Pittsburgh has it. I'll tell you, they have been very opportunistic because they've been getting blown off the line of scrimmage. I was looking particularly at Joe Green on the play because he got knocked down to play before. Usually he does something. That time they ran him about four yards deep again. Let's take a look. See if we can see Green. Now when White cuts back, it's usually a Joe Green that'll be somewhere in the area to make the play. He's nowhere to be found because two Browns knocked him back. Look at Jack Ham. You think when the guy's got the ball in his hand, he better not protect it when he's tackling him? And Jack Ham comes in ready. He was out eight weeks with a fractured arm. Got the cast off, was in two practices, and he played last Sunday at New Orleans. First down and 10 now. Bradshaw in the flat, coming back in the ball is John Starworth. He loses it, but out of bounds. Look out now. It's not the side to pick a fight. No. <laughs> Big Gary Dunn. Miami of Florida. Well, haven't they mentioned uh, a couple of times that he'd better he'd better cut his intensity level a little bit down, or it's going to hurt the Browns. Robert Jackson. Yes, and had a talk with him. Robert gets a little spirited out there, and sometimes when you hit after the play and they see it, we saw that earlier. The personal foul calls against Cleveland help the drive stay alive for the Pittsburgh Steelers as they went 97 yards and nine plays to lead this game seven nothing. 32 seconds to play in the first quarter. Franco Harris drives ahead for a first down, gets to the 35-yard line. All right, again, another trap play. Whenever they get in a position they can run a trap, they do. That was second short. You know, we talk about how do they run traps. Webster has to do his job. He did. 
gets a little help from Wolfley, and uh, they pick up four. And that will conclude the first quarter of play. Pittsburgh Steelers leading the Cleveland Browns 7 to nothing. We'll be back right after this. Thanks, Brian. Set to go with Three Rivers with the start of the second quarter. Don Crickey with John Brody on a great Western Pennsylvania day. Look Boy, at those numbers. If somebody just said the Browns run for 85 yards in the first quarter and they have no points on the board, you'd have, you'd have committed the man. But that's what they've done. That is something. Uh, just a couple turnovers. First and ten now for the Steelers, leading 7 0. Bradshaw, he wants to get all of it as fast as he can. He's going to run, and he's run well this year. Fumble the ball and out of bounds, got a few more yards and got a first down. Bradshaw has more rushing yardage this year already than he did all of last year or the year before. Came into the game with 15 rushes for over 100 yards. Yep. I'll tell you what, that's a short term deal because yeah. there are no old running quarterbacks. Uh, he makes a move here to pick up a first down. He would much rather had run to the outside, but he was he was turned in. OK, when he turns it up, he now tries to get outside. It's a little late, but he picks up. He picks up the first down, does a great job by doing so. But he's not going to make a living by running the ball. Just a little more room and they'd have had a fumble. But it worked out for the Steelers and they got 12 in the first down. And so now they're out to their 47 yard line. First and 10 early in the second quarter with Pittsburgh in the lead 7 nothing. Franco dancing a little bit. Cleveland jumping into the gaps. Hems it off. Robert L. Jackson brings him down at the 50. Got two. Some rivalry. The Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers. In November when the Steelers go to Cleveland. 80,000 will be at Cleveland Stadium. That thing was sold out last spring. Philadelphia, when they get after you, they do it in a hurry. Booker Russell, the former Oakland runner who came in to help out the Eagles because of their injuries, has run for two touchdowns. I think he should have stuck around and helped the Raiders. It's, they need some now. So do the Falcons, who were beaten Monday night by the Eagles and are now losing to the L.A. Rams. Here's Franco. He gets a delayed draw and gets a head for yardage. Second and eight. He's close to a first down. He has a first down. You notice what they're doing now, Don? They're throwing the ball in running play situations, and they're running it in throwing situations. They can still trap when it's second and ten. And if they can get their trap block, they can break something at the point. That's the second time that Harris has done it on the exact same play. When they can trap, they can go. Franco Harris, who arrived here in Pittsburgh out of Penn State in 1972, and not coincidentally, that's when the Steelers started going to the playoffs. 72 was the first year Pittsburgh was ever in postseason play. And they were in it for the next eight years in a row. They didn't make it <laughs> last year, but they looked like they might be back in 81. First and 10, Bradshaw. So much time, he's not quite sure what to do. He better be out. He does. Bruce Hutter, 58, came across and hit him. How good is his offensive line, Don? That's the second time he's had, he's, he's had no one to throw it to, and he's found a way to get out of the trap. Now let's go back to New York for another update to Byron Day. Byron. Byron Day in New York. It's turnover time at Shea Stadium. The Patriots return the compliment. Kavanaugh, his pass is picked off by Darrell Ray. He returns at 34 yards. The Jets are in business, and Richard Todd has returned to the game. It's still deadlocked, seven all, now in the in the second quarter. Let's go back to Don Crickey and John Brody. Thank you, Byron. So the Jets in New England have a good one going at Shea, and we've got a good one going here at Three Rivers Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Second down and six now for the Steelers. Pitch back Russell Davis. He's open. 20, 15. Russell Davis goes down inside the 10. 28 yards, and the Steelers are closing in on another touchdown. You just don't see that very often in pro football, where everyone is knocked down. Nobody gets a hand on the ball carrier. Gets a real good block from Swan. Then look at Larry Brown come out on the contained man. Allows Davis to cut up underneath. When he's knocked out of bounds inside the 10, it's the first time he had been touched. Let's take a look at Swan. He comes in. Mm, they're having a little go at one another. He and Bolden, he takes him out of the play. Scott is in out of bounds. Larry Brown knocked him clean out of play. <laughs> Russell Davis gets it down to the 10. Right out of your picture. Larry Brown is really having a season at right tackle 79. First and goal, and here's Bradshaw throwing in the flat. Comes in a little low, throws the low fastball. 
John Stall. <laughs> he was back there for five seconds. He figured he better do something with it. Maybe there's somebody he didn't see that was getting close. There was nobody around him. You ever get the feeling, John, when you play, when you're back there and get that much time, if you ever did, that something might be wrong? Somebody's coming from the well, right side? You get a little antsy, and uh, he's made good plays out of covered receivers twice in this drive. That was just a bad throw. 13.06 left to play in the first half. Bradshaw's made few of those this season, though. He has really been connecting, and now he sends his two aces on the left flank. Bradshaw looking over at Swan and Stallworth to the left, and in most right goes Thornton. Pitch back free football. Russell Davis picks it up. And does well to get the ball and get ahead for a yard or two. You said that right. He did well to get the ball. That's what you have to call bouncing it your way. That ball was past him, could easily have rolled right back here to the 20 yard line, bounced right in his hands. Chuck Knoll sends Jim Smith into the game. Benny Cunningham comes out, so they'll have three wide receivers in the game. Bradshaw having quite a season at Pittsburgh. Now through four games, has not had an interception. Well over 90 passes without one. He's had a lot of success against Cleveland over the years. Has thrown 28 career touchdown passes against the Browns. More than against any other team. Third down and goal. Bradshaw takes a look. Throws. The man is open. Lynn Swan. Cleveland denies him the end zone, but Swan is down very close to it. That brings up fourth down. They denied him the end zone, but they didn't deny him the inside. He was he was he really made a great play just to get to the inside Hudson Flint had him had him from the outside was trying to take the inside away couldn't do it Swan made the play just in time because Bradshaw did get decked just as he threw it Flint did a pretty good job to keep him out of the end zone though enough that they're not close enough to try to punch it in they send out David Trout to try the field goal rookie from the University of Pittsburgh not very tall only about five five or five six. Got a lot of thrust in that leg, though. He can kick it off through the end zone on occasion. Not many of his kickoffs have been returned. No problem with the extra with the field goal. It's up and good. And so, with the field goal on the board, the Steelers extend their lead to 10 to nothing with 11.28 to play in the first half. So, Pittsburgh looking for its fourth consecutive win on a roll. Host Bryant Gumbel for NFL 81. All the highlights, the scores, and the late breaking news from all the games. Then, regional NFL action here on NBC. Featuring a pivotal game in the AFC Central as these Pittsburgh Steelers head down to Southern Ohio to take on the Cincinnati Bengals. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area next Sunday on NFL 81. Try to hit the field goal, ready to kick it off for the Pittsburgh Steelers as they've opened their lead now to 10-0 in the second quarter, 11-28 to play with it. Dino Hall is back deep. Charles White with him. Charles White comes up the middle. He's a load of fun when he gets moving up in a couple of blocks. And Charles White is knocked down by Zach Valentine. Valentine's become some kind of special teams player, and that time he saved about 30 yards. Coming up next today, the fifth and deciding game in the National League Divisional Series. Montreal Expos battle the Phillies Veteran Stadium Philadelphia. And some of you will see Houston at Los Angeles. That's coming up next on NBC. At 4 o'clock Eastern Time. Nolan Ryan's going to have another go at it today, I believe. George Steinbrenner and Rick Cerrone had their problems. <laughs> Nicky Kitcher took on the boss. Here is a long throw by Brian Seip. Penalty marker goes down. Ricky Feature running the long pattern. Right with him was Donnie Shell. Well, I'll tell you, Shell doesn't believe it. And when you. We, we've discussed. You know, defensive interference so many times. They very seldom call it, but he did not have any attention on the ball. He seemed to keep feature from being able to get to the ball. I think that's what the call was made for. You can stand in his way, but if, he, if he's making an attempt to get to the ball and you don't allow him to, as you see here, Shell finally turns around, but he really, for all intents and purposes, kept the receiver from his opportunity to go after it. Sipe comes down. He's trying to get down the middle. We mentioned that's where he tried to go on Shell. Shell's in perfect position, but he got called. Live action now. Shell set to go again. 32 yards on the penalty. Steelers jump. Penalty markers go. We'll see if they were drawn offside. Charles White got the call. White now in his second year. What a back he was in college. 49 touchdowns in Southern California. 
6,200 yards. Second all time to touchdown Tony Dorsett in NCAA record books. <laughs> all the all the guys they've had in L.A. and John Robinson says Marcus Allen's the best tailback that's ever lined up at USC. Defense number 90 was offside. First down. First down. I wonder what the juice thinks about that. Well, I don't know. They've had so many great ones. You talk about Ricky Bell, Charles White, Marcus Allen. You, you name them. All of them. White started to get a lot of playing time here at Cleveland. You saw what he did earlier. He's ripped off some good ones. He had the 26-yard gainer. Now it's first down and five for Cleveland. Nice down for Brian Sipes. Some nice options. He has time. He looks. He throws long. Features out there. Mel Blunt was covering. That Blunt is so crafty. Well, we have a moment. Let's get another update from NFL 81 as we go back to New York. Byron Day. Okay, Don, thank you. The Jets have capitalized on a Patriot turnover. Todd, a five-yard pass to Barkham. A little assist here by number 44, Tom New to the Patriots. 14-7, Jets. Now in the second. Don? Jets playing good football the last few weeks, John. They have, and they turned it around after they left Three Rivers. They absolutely stunk the place out here. They've played pretty well since. We were witness to that. That was the day the Steelers turned it around, too. They were talking about the Steelers being on the way out. 0-2. Charles White, second down and five, gets inside the 35-yard line, down to the 34. Bob Coors made the tackle. Bring up third down and about three now for Cleveland. Chuck Knoll was an offensive guard after being drafted out of Dayton as a 21st-round draft choice by the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> I, think, I think the size hasn't changed a little. Juicy Beasley down there standing alongside him. <laughs> Looks like a little kid. Knoll with those six championship rings doesn't wear any of them. Third and two, Cleveland. Handoff, Pruitt, he's ahead. Looks like he's got a first down. Their offensive line has really dominated play. They haven't got any points on the board, but they have run the ball. They've done anything they want run-wise and still can't score. I mean, it's turnovers that have kept them out of the ball game thus far. You're Not pointing out, John, that impressive rushing. 91 yards rushing for the Cleveland Browns against a Steeler team that hasn't given up very much of that this year. In fact, nobody's gained 100 yards here at Three Rivers Stadium since 1977 when Greg Pruitt of the Browns did it. Earl Campbell's played here five times since then and hasn't gained 100 That's yards. That's right. Well, Charles White's got 51 already. Look here. It does happen fast when it happens. William Andrews on a run. Barkowski to Junior Miller on a touchdown throw, and the Falcons have taken the lead. Sight throws. Mike Pruitt stripped to the ball. Jack Lambert, 58, got him. I think you're seeing why why the Browns have been as effective as they have running the ball, because I haven't seen a, a receiver open for the Browns all day long. They've got doubled that time by Lambert and Ham. They're, they've really taken the throw, the pass away from Sype uh, through most of the day, and you can't take it all away. Browns have moved the ball well, but they've not been able to put points up. They trail in the game 10-0, 9.43 to play in the first half. 0 for 11 are the Cleveland Browns here at Three Rivers Stadium, but they come so close every year. Last year, with last five seconds of the game, Pittsburgh pulled out a win here. Two previous years, won an overtime on field goal. Sight throws for the end zone. Good coverage is there. Broken up. Anthony Washington, 42. They like him. Rookie out of San Jose State. Well, when you get a one-on-one -on -one situation, they like to go down on him, too. Take a look. Pittsburgh's really putting their cornerbacks in a bind here. They're coming back to a double zone, but it's really man-to-man -man on the corners because neither of the inside people could get back to help. That's Washington all the way on Rucker. Covers him like a blanket. Another look as Brian Sipe throws long. Is he done putting the pressure on? Off goes. Coverage is right there by Washington, the fifth defensive back. They got what they wanted. They just couldn't execute. Now Reggie Rucker, Ricky Feature go wide to the right. Ozzie Newsom, a big tight end from Alabama, splits out as a wide out to the left side. No markers. You saw the early motion. Side with a problem. Eludes it for a moment. Throws the ball. Stripped away from Ricky Feature. Wayne Woodruff was right there, number 49. 
Tell you, Green made a fine play there, forcing Sipe out of the pocket. And even when he got out of the pocket, he couldn't find an open receiver. This is that's great secondary coverage. Now this big ovation is because the Browns are going to try a field goal, and old friend Matt Barr is back to kick this time. Let's take a look at the secondary. This gives us a great shot of it. There's nowhere Brian can throw the ball. If you can't find a man open, you, you're dead. Here's Matt Barr, a very popular guy here in Pittsburgh, who was cut beaten out this year by Steve Trout. Matt Barr ready to kick for the Cleveland Browns. It's on the way. It's not going to get there. No good. And so the ball turns over to the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Browns control it for a good length of time again, but come up empty. 9.24 to play first half. And we'll return to Three River Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, after this. To be inept on offense, it is the Chiefs who have just gotten on the board. Joe Delaney taking this swing pass from Bill Kenny, and before he's brought down, he picks up 62 yards. It set up a four-yard run by Billy Jackson. Chiefs out ahead of the Raiders, 10 to nothing. Let's go back to Don Cricky and John Brooke. Thank you, Brian. Oakland Raiders defending champions have their problems. I saw Art Modell, the president of the Browns, before the game, John. He was talking about in all the years he's owned Cleveland, his 21st year. There's never been the balance in the league this year. And he cited Oakland. He said, You see the Raiders getting shut out consecutive weeks. I don't care who's hurt. He said, A lot of good teams have started to come up. Hey, the Browns may have made a big mistake. They shut down Pittsburgh's running game. That puts Bradshaw back in the pocket, and he has been throwing the ball about as well as a man can do it. 101 consecutive passes for Terry Bradshaw without an interception. He has an interesting throwing style. He puts his index finger right on the nose of the football. He said that's where it feels comfortable for him. Uh, it's like every kid has to have his own style and his own throwing motion. You can't get too robotish when you're throwing a football. It's a God-given talent. You can improve it, but you have to have it to start with. He said, I picked it up the first time I did. I put my finger back there, and I didn't see any reason to change, and I don't see any reason to make him. None at all, as Bradshaw has the Steelers moving and in the late 10 nothing. Got the two great ones on the right, Stallworth and Swan. Swings it out. That's Franco. Boom, ahead from the second and two for the first down. Franco Harris down his tenth year from Penn State. You know, Don, it, you take a look at the at the great backs and you say, geez, why is he great? It's it's oftentimes the little things. Now here Franco catches a ball, a little swing pass. If he gets tackled without getting underneath the tackler, it's third down and four, probably stops the drive. He knows the importance of getting the first down. Ducks under two tacklers and just picks it up. First down and 10 for the Pittsburgh Steelers at their 41 yard line, almost to the 42. Franco. Oh. There's some hard licks being delivered out there. It's just usually offensive holding when the ball, when the flag thrown in that area, but it. Breaking the action here, back to New York to Brian Gumbel. Brian. Well, Don, the league's most prolific scoring combination in the air has just struck the New England Patriots. Richard Todd's 13th touchdown pass of the year to Wesley Walker, his sixth of the year. Jets in front, 21-7. Don? Gee, the Jets are doing some work. When they did get started, Don, they got, they got going pretty good. I mean, it was holding, Donnie. I thought it might be... It might be a penalty for hitting too hard. Ambrose just laid the wood to the back. So the Steelers are set back 10 yards on the hold, and now they have first and 20. They're 32. Bradshaw, boy, he just takes all day. Swings it out. Benny Cunningham one hands the ball and gets out to the 45-yard line. So he got the penalty yardage back and five more. 15-yard gain on the play. It'll be second and five. <laughs> It's funny how those great players make great plays just when the defense thinks they're going to get a break. Hanford Dixon that time was waiting to pick the ball off. And here comes Cunningham right through the whole zone area, right past the linebackers, grabs the ball. Hmm, and Stallworth unloads on Dixon. Talking about the increase in size, you look at Kellen Winslow at San Diego, 6'6", 250. Benny Cunningham is 6'4", 260. They all can fly. Second down and five now as Bradshaw drops to throw and a whistle stops the play. 7.38 to play in the first half. Danny Cunningham has caught three today for 44 yards. 
I think if I'm Sam, I might say, hey, let him run the ball a little better. Keep Bradshaw from firing that thing down the field because. Uh, no, there's no penalty. 89 with the end. He moved. He can get set. He's all right. Second down. Good. You know they've done that a lot more this year. They'll make a play. They'll make a call. They'll correct it. They'll get it right. And, uh, whenever it's possible, I think it's a big improvement. So no penalty. And they're ready to run the down now. Second down and five for the Steelers. Just across their 46-yard line. Here comes Swan out here with Bolton, and these two have had a war from the time the gun went off. Starworth is on the other side of the top of your screen against the rookie Hanford Dixon. Out to Swan. Good play by linebacker Don Good of the Cleveland Browns. Very, very fast backer. Terry's kind of blaming himself for that because he has to get the ball out there a little faster when a linebacker can pursue and get to Swan before he can get turned up field. It stops the play. All right, now watch Swan. He comes wide open, but the ball's thrown a little low and it's thrown a little slow. That move right there kept him from picking up good yardage because he's got Cunningham out in front of him to block on Bolton. They could have had a first down. Now Jim Smith comes out wide to the right. Starworth and Swan go to the top of your screen. Russell Davis comes out of the backfield. Bradshaw going long. Swan, look at that play. He can't hold on to the ball. What a pass. Light on the hands, and Swan will drop about one of those a season. Look at the reaction of Bradshaw. It's just ho-hum, another day at the plant. Obviously, he doesn't like it. This is a big game for them. I've seen Lynn Swan miss a few balls that are coming at him, catching him in the chest. I've never seen him drop a ball that was going away from him like this. I mean, this is just a piece of cake. Hits him. When it hits his hands, it's usually just, it's long gone. Another look. All right, Bradshaw just threw the ball about as well as it could be thrown into a double coverage zone. Three guys on him, but when you put it there, you can't, there's no defense. Colquitt ready to punt for the Steelers. Dino Hall is back deep for Cleveland. Angle punt to the sideline. And it hops out of bounds inside the 20. Well done by Colquitt of the Steelers. Look out, Dino. 40-yarder, <laughs> of course, no return as he angles it out. 6.40 to go. First half. Steelers still in the lead. 10 to nothing, and we'll be back after this. Tackle Larry Brown is attended to on the Steelers' sideline. Browns have the ball. First and 10 as the scores come in from around the National Football League on the sixth weekend of play. And Atlanta down on that game 13 to nothing comes back with another Bartkowski touchdown pass. This to Alfred Jenkins from 21 yards out. And all of a sudden, Falcons score 21 unanswered points and take an eight-point lead. You know, Sam Ritigliano said, he said, you don't ever know which team you're going to play when you go out to L.A. The one that can beat anybody in the world or the one that lays down and dies. And it looks like they've done a little of each today. That is a weird game. A long way from over, as is this one. Browns go to the run. Mike Pruitt turns the corner, turns up field on a first and 10 carry. Pruitt gets across the 15-yard line. They've run the ball effectively, and that this time it's it's amazing because you can see nine players on the line of scrimmage. They're going to shut him down and make him throw the ball here. Earlier they were giving him a little room run-wise. Pruitt picks a fine hole and picks up five yards. Uh, that's good running. Mike Pruitt, a power back who really started to play once Rotigliano got him at Cleveland. Coming off consecutive thousand yard rushing seasons. Been to the Pro Bowl the last two years, Mike Pruitt. The big back from Purdue. Second down and five for Cleveland. Pruitt again, running that quick slant down to the 20 yard line. He got ahead for a couple of yards. Ryan Sipe, John, has thrown virtually not at all, one for three. And that's what's going on. You know, it's been stated by Sam that Brian has to get a little more patient. You said earlier he's directing the offense. He can't be the whole offense. Well, he's doing something that's contrary to his personality, and it's tough for him to operate this way. But he's been patient. Today, he's been patient. They've run the ball well, but they have no points. Now we go with third down and three. Sipe calls his own number and gets it out to the 25-yard line. We've got a correction now at the statistically. Brian Sipe has thrown the ball nine times and has completed three. 
But still way under the numbers he goes. He can put yeah. it up 55 times if need be. Yeah. Here's Brian. Now you take a look at what this whole thing's about from a quarterback's viewpoint. And I'll tell you what, all you see are elbows and helmets when you're back there. You see, he's the smallest man on the field. He looks, he can't find anybody downfield. I defy anybody that's looking at this picture to have seen an open receiver. And that's what Brian's looking at. Picks up a first down and says, let's go back to the other. He's spreading out those receivers now. Two of them come out to the left. Now Newsom comes back to the line of scrimmage. First and ten. He gets some time, lost it long. Ozzie Newsom goes for the ball, but the closest man to it was Dwayne Woodruff, the left corner, the fastest stealer. Mm. On the rare occasions that they do get a man open, they haven't been able to hit him. That was not a well thrown ball. Tell you when they they're working their their heads off to try and get a man open. Now they've got Brian throwing the ball down the field. He's in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Newsom's trying. Newsom's, you know, he's in a good position to make a big play, and the ball's just overthrown. That's the way it's gone for Cleveland so far. Ozzie is tight end size, but he's got wide receiver speed. That's what he was at Alabama. Ozzie Newsom from Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Here's the run now. Greg Pruitt looks to turn the corner, and there is a hard strike delivered by Donnie Shell. The Steelers voted their most valuable player last season. Strong safety. Boy, he makes so many tackles at the line of scrimmage. For a strong safety to be at the line of scrimmage as fast as he is, and he plays up there a lot, so it's, you know, it, you can expect it, but he just very seldom misses a tackle. It's interesting the way he plays the tight end, too. He comes right smack up on his nose, runs all over the field with him. Boy, he's got the perfect makeup for a defensive back. He figures, well, they'll beat me some, and I'll beat them some, but we'll just line up in the huddle and come back and play another play. One of the rare free safeties or defensive backs who came in as a free agent made all pro. Willie Wood did it at Green Bay. Cliff Harris did it at Dallas. All the free agents. Not all the great ones come in the first round. <laughs> Third and nine for Brian Seif. Throws and Charles White catches the ball, turns up field, and Charles White might have a Cleveland first down. And that's all effort on his part. I think he's kept their drive alive by getting it by about a foot or two. 3-11 left to play in the first half. Let's go back to New York now to Bryant Gumbel. Bryant? Well, Don, inside their own 20, the Jets have committed what could be a costly turnover. Richard Todd swings this one out to number 35, Mike Augustiniak. He loses the handle on it, and it leads to a touchdown for New England. It now stands at 21-13. Don? The Shea Stadium in New York. The Patriots and the Jets. Now, on first and ten, Seif throws in the flat, and Reggie Rucker is there, and he has the big gainer for Cleveland down to the 41-yard line of Pittsburgh. J.T. Thomas, number 24, got him. Hey, Brian has not got his hand securely on the ball. There's, their balls feel different on different days to quarterbacks, and he is not in the groove right now. This time, he throws a little wobbly end-over-ender, and it hits his receiver, but it was made possible because the, the pass protection was so good he could slip out and throw it. Look at the wobble on the ball. That's not the way Brian Seif throws it. Brian Seif's going to be throwing a lot more before this one is over. <laughs> Steelers dig in on defense, take a look, and Seif takes a deep drop. Gets away. He's got a lot of room to run if he wants to go, and he's going to. First Ooh. down, Cleveland, free ball. Pittsburgh has the ball. Now blunt. They're going to blow it dead. They got a good call there. They blow it dead. Cleveland maintains the ball. Well, when that quarterback gets down the field, past the line of scrimmage, very few quarterbacks in this game know what to do once they get past the line of scrimmage. And you see fumbles by quarterbacks, I'd say about 30% of the time. Usually you try to get out of bounds. He could pick up a pretty good gain if Charles White can handle uh, Cole. Mm. The Browns have no complaints with that call as two minutes remain to be played in the first half and Cleveland keeps the drive alive and for a very long period of time and he's got no case there was Woodruff out there one on one with Newsom he cut underneath him about five plays earlier when we saw Sipe miss him but you get the same situation three or four times and they're going to score same pattern Brian just hit him this time he sure did as the Cleveland Browns get on the board Perfectly executed play. Newsom running the post pattern, takes it into the end zone. 
And the Cleveland Browns now trail 10-6. Matt Barr to try to point after. Matt Barr, as he's done so many times when he was a Steeler, knocks it right through the uprights. And so the Cleveland Browns are right back in this game, trailing 10-7 with 1.54 left to play in the first half. Back after this. Bear Bryant once stated there were two all-timers at Alabama catching the ball. One was Don Hudson. The other was Ozzie Newsom, who just made his first reception of the day for Cleveland for 29 yards and a touchdown that gets the Browns right back in it. And that's their longest scoring drive, John, of the year. And he's one of the few guys that you do not want to put one-on-one -on -one with a cornerback that plays tight end. He's just got all of it. Don Crickey with John Brody, Three Rivers Stadium as the kickoff travels out of bounds off the foot of rookie Steve Cox. So bring it back upfield. He'll try again from his 30. Take a look at the scoring play, Donnie. We see him. We see they're in a situation to stop the run. It's first and 10. Newsom gets out there, gets on Woodruff. Now watch this move. He takes him as far to the sideline as he can. Then he cuts up underneath just perfectly timed. Nobody in that area. Site puts the ball where it has to be thrown. Easy six points. Fun to talk about those touchdowns when you come back to the bench. I've been waiting to see Steve Cox. They, Sam said he's going to save a lot of wear and tear on my special teams because he kicks so many balls in the end zone. So far, we've seen him kick one short and one out of bounds. I. He's got a live leg. Young man from Arkansas led the NCAA in punting last year. 46 and a half yards a punt averaging 43 and a half in his rookie season with Cleveland a very good average and John you pointing out he's a great kickoff man what's it going to do here what's the on side action yep unloads but high spinner that Anderson will take at the 14 yard line penalty markers down Cleveland was guilty of an infraction with that shift Anderson gets to the 37 yard line. Steelers might want that one though. That's yeah. Good field this, is, this is interesting because they have a minute and 50 seconds left to play in the half. Right there, they're in good field On a position. Team. I I think that Bradshaw will will de decline the penalty. They've got good field position. Offside Cox. on a kicking team. Decline the penalty at first down. First and ten. You never know. You get a guy like Cox and you have enough respect for him. He gets off a real good kickoff and they're stuck back inside their 20 and they've blown their chance to score. Now they've got a chance. They say this is the most important down in football. First down. The Browns have certainly done well with theirs today. Haven't they? You like to have a lot of them. Yep. The more first downs you have, <laughs> the more you're moving those chain markers. Getting near the end zone. It's 10 7 game now. Oh. Russell Davis lost the handle and a penalty marker comes flying in from deep Cleveland secondary. Incomplete pass leaves the game clock showing 143 left to play in the first half. Against the Browns. Well, we've alluded to the fact that Bolton and Swan are having to go at one another on every play. That was a case of. I believe Bolton pushed him right out of bounds. Defense, illegal contact, number two, 28, <laughs> five yards in the first down. Browns are right where they were last year at this point through the first five games. They'd won two and lost three, and as you know, went on to win the AFC Central with an 11 and five record. Sam Tigliano says it's not a critical game, it's a big game. Only critical situ situations are in Warren's surgery. Gary Bradshaw says, yeah, well, he's never been to divorce court. <laughs> Here is Bradshaw running the ball, slides in at the 48-yard line. On a first and 10 play, Terry Bradshaw gets ahead for six yards. You can see the frustration on Matthew's face. Very good decision by Bradshaw. It's not often a linebacker gets a shot at a quarterback unless he's rushing him. Steelers going into alignment without the huddle. 116 on the game clock. A throw and it's intercepted. Don Good has the ball for Cleveland. And Don Good is to the 33-yard line, so the Browns get it back with 108 left to play. Bradshaw with his first interception and over 100 throws. I tell you, that's a that's a real war going on. Again, I hate to keep relating to it, but between Bolton and Swan, Bolton knocks Swan off his pattern. Here he is. He's out there with Lynn. He's trying to do anything he can just to take away whatever's going on. <laughs> He doesn't care where the ball goes. Once it's past Swan, it's his turn to tee off. 
And Good comes up with the interception. So Cleveland has it back as the Browns are right back in this game, trailing 10 7. Coach Noel checking things out with Terry, asking him what's the problem there, son. 105 passes before the interception. Newsom is open again, and he's down to the 43 yard line. Down the field, they're finding a way to get to Ozzie Newsom. It took them a while to do it, but they've done it three times uh, in the last six passes. 24 yard gain on that play, so the Cleveland Browns are moving again. Game clock down to 41 seconds and running. Sight on first down, throws over the middle to Charles White, and he has the ball at the 36. Timeout. Sight does this as well as anybody. He and Stabler, Bradshaw. They don't waste seconds. They are still well out of field goal range, so we're going to see what Sipe and the Browns offense does when we return to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. This is Don Crickey with John Brody, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania's Three River Stadium, home of the Steelers, and they're holding to a 10-7 lead right now after opening up a 10-0 advantage, but the Cleveland Browns have come back. A 29-yard throw from Brian Sipe to Ozzie Newsom put the Browns on the board, and now the interception by Don Good, the subsequent drive, has Cleveland at the Pittsburgh 35-yard line, but time is a big factor. 34 seconds left in the first half. Second down and two for Cleveland. Draw play. Greg Pruitt. Room to run, and he's almost breaking all the way. Lambert got him and held on. Interesting play, John. Well, you almost know they're not going to fire the ball because when they line up on the line of scrimmage, they've got Newsom out here on Blunt. That's a matchup they don't want to have. Now they're starting to ease on into field goal range for Matt Barr. We could have a dead heat at halftime here. They call the timeout with 29 seconds to play in the half. Jack Lambert, eight times in the Pro Bowl. These Pittsburgh Steelers, a number of them, make their reservations for the Pro Bowl a year in advance. They know they're going to be there. Yeah. There is some great things coming up next weekend on NBC. 30 of the best drivers in the world have battled over eight months for the title of world champion, and one race remains with three men in contention for the most coveted title in motorsports. And you'll see the deciding contest next Saturday live. The Caesars Palace Grand Prix on a special edition of NBC Sports World. It's live next Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. We see Steve Cox over there, the kicker. We just got very bad news that Pat Hayden has broken a leg. Oh, no. now uh, that guy's had his share of bad breaks. I don't think he needs any more. Well, if he's a good quarterback, and he certainly is, he's a better young man. You don't talk about a class act. Pat Hayden is one. I wouldn't say they've uh, they had an overabundance of class acts out there in the last couple of months, but he's one of them. <laughs> Pat's a great young man. He only wish him well to get back in there soon. Ryan Sipe looks in zone ball man is out there. So is the coverage and they take the ball away. Dave Logan comes in runs the fly pattern and that rookie Anthony Washington saves a touchdown. And that is not the way Dave Logan generally runs a pattern. You, that's why he's not playing. He's not healthy enough but they figured if they could get him out there now they have a one on one situation. Logan goes back. He's given these Steelers fits. Washington makes a great save. I think Logan thought the ball might come get past him. Logan can go up in the air to get it. They've had him in this year as a defensive back to knock down those last ditch pass plays like they were beaten <laughs> at in Minnesota. In fact, he intercepted one when he was in there. And Autry Beeman, a reserve defensive back at Cleveland, said, I've been here two years and you've already got one more than me. <laughs> Second down and 10 now for the Browns. 23 seconds to play in the first half. Brian Sipe with the drop. Cleveland trailing 10 7. The rush is there. He gets it away to Greg Pruitt. They're going to whistle the yeah. Oh, that's a tough call. They like it in Pittsburgh. I don't think they like it 120 miles to the west. Well, the thing you can't tell, Don, as we sit here, is when the whistle blew. It could have blown while, while the defender had Sipe in his grasp, and he could have given him a pretty good tumble down to the ground. He's definitely got a little control, but... Uh, We've, we've seen a few marginal calls. They go, they've gone both ways. I don't think calls have been the indicator. Well, they have gone both ways. And right now, a timeout signal for and nine seconds on the game clock in the first half. 
put his priorities together. He said, if you get cut by a pro football team, that's the worst thing that ever happens to you. Your life isn't too bad. That's right. All right, no timeouts left for the Browns, so remember, they've got to either throw it out of bounds or into the end zone. Third and 20. Sipe lets a rip going high to Logan. He didn't see it. Five seconds left. Get another down, though, another chance at it. And they're going to come out now. They've got Cox going, going at it. Yeah. Yeah, Cox is going to come out. Paul McDonald comes out to hold. It's a 53 yarder against a little wind. Uh, I know he's kicked some that long, but this will test him. 53 yard attempt by rookie Steve Cox of the Cleveland Browns. If he hits it, he'll tie the game at the first half gun. Five seconds to go. Nowhere. Rolls through the end zone, no good. And so at the end of the first half, the score is the Pittsburgh Steelers 10, the Cleveland Browns 7. Have been the team. Dino Hall and Charles White are back for the Cleveland Browns. A spinning kick's going to carry short. Here comes Charles White to the 20. And Charles White gets across the 25 out to the 28 yard line. And there the Browns go on offense, first and 10. The Cleveland Browns on offense will have Brian Seidman quarterback. Through less than he usually does in the first half. Ryan Sipe in the first half put the ball up 17 times, completed eight, intercepted once. Of course, hit the touchdown pass to Newsom. You see the runners and the wide receivers. We'll see if Logan is in there. He was in there very briefly in the first half, playing with a cracked rib. Offensive line has taken good care of Brian Sipe. There's been only one sack in this game so far. That was of Sipe late in the first half. Steelers said everybody first down pitch back goes to Charles White and he breaks the first line of defense and gets out to the 35 yard line that that looked like one of those plays he brought from SC huh? student body right you got it and defensively the Pittsburgh Steelers have Coors and Goodman the defensive ends Green and Dunn now LC Greenwood's going to be in it place of Goodman to start the second half the linebackers and the defensive backs each team has an interception. Here's Eddie Johnson injured his right arm in the first half coming back out to watch the second doesn't look like he'll play a backup linebacker. Second down and seven. Cleveland goes back to the run and they give it to their fullback Mike Pruitt. He's knocked down. Since 78 this is how this series has broken down. Three River Stadium. Overtime game. The Steelers that year it's actually done better over the recent years at Cleveland they've done here. <laughs> hey, the Steelers have done so well in all ballparks, Don, that it uh, doesn't matter who they play. Pittsburgh working on a 10th consecutive winning season. Pruitt on the pitch back. Lambert with a great tackle. And feeling very good about having his pal Jack Ham on his left side. It's the defensive strategy of the Steelers to keep the lineman off Lambert. Let him get through the cracks. Let him make most of the tackles. That's what's been the fort of the defensive line over the past several years. I tell you, he picks up whatever they leave him. Jack Lambert, a great one in the middle. A Hall of Famer in years to come. You know, that's, that's one of the reasons that Perlis moved uh, Joe Green in between tackle and guard. They really started that whole formation. And what it does is it keeps people off of Jack. Lambert will hide behind Joe Green with both <laughs> barrels loaded. They can't get to him. Loss of a yard in the last play at second and 11. Sight over the middle has a man, but it comes in a little bit behind Reggie Rucker. And there's also a penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. It's going to go against Pittsburgh. Hmm. Play. Face mask. Browns get a big break on second and 11. The defensive penalty automatic first down for Cleveland. They've had a couple pretty good breaks late in the first half. And are here in number 68 grabbing a face mask at the five yard penalty and a first down. 
That's the big problem, the five yard penalty. Otherwise, it would have been second and five. Sipe had, he had Rucker open, just missed him that time. I've seen him throw four or five ball games in a row without missing anybody, Don. And he's missed three or four open receivers today. Ryan Sipe, the man who led the National Football League in passing last year with over 4,100 yards, 30 touchdowns. NFC Player of the Year got a lot of MVP votes for National Football League Player of the Year. Now he throws on the run and does well to get it away as L.C. Greenwood knocked down Brian Seif hard. Brown coaches protesting that. Brian Seif was wrapped real hard last week at Anaheim by the Rams at a slight concussion. Yeah, but that's a, that's a very right play. I mean, he's out of the pocket. He's lost a lot of his protection. Greenwood doesn't know if he's going to run it or throw it right now. He's got to do all he can to get on top of him and make something happen. Greenwood is a formidable opponent. He uses that head like a battering ram. Big LC Greenwood, 6'7, 260, six times in the Pro Bowl. And over the recent years, he has been the Steelers' best pass rusher. Bradshaw waiting to get in there and start using that right arm. Second down and 10 coming up for Cleveland. 44 yard line of the Browns. Sipe has a problem, and down he goes. The second sack of the game, L.C. Greenwood gets it. There is also a penalty marker down in the secondary. Before the snap, delay the game. That's why I was in the secondary, but we've seen a lot of yellow flags in that secondary beyond the no-contact zone. There's been a lot of contact down there today. Referee marks it off. It was before the snap, the delay of game. So the penalty is assessed. It takes the ball back inside the Cleveland 40. It's going to be second down 15. 12 28 to go in the third quarter. A 10 7 game. Pittsburgh in the lead. So there's no sack on that play. That play was disallowed. Sipe on second and long, way, way back, throws in the flat. He's got Charles White. Mel Blunt's got him. After White. Mel Blunt is still one of the fastest Steelers. He's been around a long time, 12 years. Still runs the 4 5 40. <laughs> you know what's really a funny sight is to see Doug Deacon, number 73, standing in the huddle alongside Ricky Feature. It looks like one of those cartoons that you see. He's got to be a foot. <laughs> He's got to be a look at this. Yeah. Now feature is over six foot tall. How big? How big is Deacon? <laughs> He's standing straight up. Big Doug is full grown at 6'5", 252. He had quite a record last year. Didn't allow one sack in the entire season in his left tackle position. Doug Deacon. Bay Village, Ohio now. Third down and nine. Oh, throw over the middle. Features open. He makes a diving reception. There is a penalty marker down in the Cleveland backfield. I think it's holding. Flag on the play. Boy, Sipe hung in there so well on that play to get that ball off. They played a little game on the, on the left side. Actually beat... Uh, Robert E. and Deacon, pardon me, Don. Excuse me. It wipes out a 25-yard gain there. So offense holding number 64. Mm. Boy, it's Lamalier. Watch now, Sipe. You see the perfect angle. He sees feature from the bottom of your screen coming into the left side, getting by Blunt, getting into the hole. Sipe hung in there through a perfect strike, all for naught. Third down and 18 now. Hard, so enough, hard enough to do that once. He better hurry it a little. There's 10 seconds left. That's the 30-second clock, seven. Team, of course, is allowed 30 seconds between. But Sipe's got to call a timeout. And that's why. So they only have two left in a game where they might need as many as they can get. That's the kind of foul up that you really don't want to see. I'm not sure I wouldn't have taken the five extra yards in that situation because very seldom do they pick up third down and 18 or 19. I think the, uh, the timeout was more important. I don't think they'll keep their drive alive. Interesting point. Most timeouts down the stretch have been very, very important in this series. And this is a three-point game right now. So the Browns call a timeout. Sam Ratigliano. 
Checks things out with his quarterback, and while he does, we'll go to New York to Bryant Gumbel. Bryant? Well, down, down in the Astrodome, uh, Jim Zorn has just thrown up an interception. The Seahawks continue to lead 10 to 7. And while we're showing the, this, we want to update some erroneous information. We had reported a broken ankle for Pat Hayden that may have been premature. It's now reported he has a severe contusion. Don? Well, hopefully he'll be back then, Pat Hayden. You know, we just heard the Seattle-Houston game. I don't know what's going on in Houston because they, they're once potent offense. When you've got Earl Campbell and, and Kenny Stabler offensively and you're not putting more points on the board than Houston is right now, something's going on offensively. I don't know what it is, but uh, they've got to get it together to, to handle one of these two clubs. I want to talk to you more about that, John. For first, we're going to pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. Pittsburgh's 11, WPXI, the news station. I think the most remarkable statistic we've seen this year was the passing stats of Kenny Stabler last week. One for three for, what, three yards? Yeah, you know that's coming from the bench, and uh, that isn't the way they like to play. But they did win, and Earl Campbell got himself 182, running the ball. Here's Sight throwing. Reggie Rucker goes up, and the Steelers waffle him at the 40. He knew he'd pay a big price going up in the middle of that secondary, and he did. I'll tell you what, that's... That's suicide zone for a receiver, Don. It's, it's so hard on receivers. Let's take a look at the whole thing. We've got five short zones covered, and they're dropping off. They're dropping off a long way. Now, even though you get through the zone, you still don't have much of a play. While we're looking at this replay, Rucker's down on the field, and he can't get off. So you know what kind of collisions take place out there. He got up and started to walk off, and then he went down again, Reggie Rucker. He was hit by Blunt and by Shell, and they both came from opposite sides, sandwiched him. 12 minutes to go in the third quarter. Mel Blunt is a striker, and he's linebacker size, 6'3", 218. I can remember asking Rucker before the ball game how he was feeling, and he said, you know, considering the, the circumstances, I'm feeling all right. I'm not 100% healthy. When you take a lick like this, okay, you think Blunt didn't get a good piece of him? He got, a, he got touched by the ball and all three Steelers. So Reggie Rucker being attended to on the field. Clock is stopped with 12 minutes to go in the third quarter. And the Isaac Hayes of cornerbacks. His work well done comes to the sideline. Boy, he just keeps playing year after year after year. You hear less and less about him because nobody tries him anymore. And I don't blame him. They say, John, he's as good one-on-one -on -one coverage as perhaps there's ever been. I think he is. Jimmy Johnson was so great for 15, 16 years. Uh, I put these two in the same class. Right now, Cox is on the field to punt. Deep man back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Standing back inside his 30-yard line. Jim Smith drifts back to the 18 and starts up field. Hemmed in and knocked out of bounds at the 30. So the Steelers go back on offense with 11.49 to play in the third quarter. A 41-yard punt, a 7-yard return. We'll be back after this. To the 45-yard line, a 15-yard gain and a first down. They have been so effective running the ball on passing, on passing downs. It's second and 10. It's a passing down. Not, not for Pittsburgh. They found this is the best down in which they can run. They've been stuffed on first down, but they're more effective running than throwing on second. Ball just across the Pittsburgh 45-yard line. The Steelers and Bradshaw go to the air. Ooh, Ooh. Other had a play on the ball to the 42. Gary Bradshaw, who went 105 consecutive throws without an interception until Don Good picked one off in the first half, almost had a second go to the hands of a Cleveland linebacker. Yeah, Hutter was standing there, and he beating his hands on the ground. He ran <laughs> right by it. So did Cunningham. The numbers have been good for Cleveland. They're standing right up in both offense and defense. And as we mentioned earlier, the Browns are right where they were a year ago. Two wins in their first five games. Then they went on that nine-game tear. Now it's second down and ten for Pittsburgh. Swan and Star with wide to either side. There's a throw down the field and over the head of Lynn Swan, who was turning back at the ball. Bolton did a real fine job of playing defense. You've got to give Lynn Swan some room. 
These two have been having to go at it all day, as we've mentioned. Now watch. He's backing off. He's backing off. He's backing off. Now Swanee makes his break. He puts his eyes on the quarterback, and the ball comes right through him. Had that ball not been thrown high, he'd have picked it off. That might have been why Terry threw it there. That could <laughs> very well be. Now he sends Swan back out to the right again. Jim Smith goes out wide to the left. Stallworth comes in a slot to the right side. The bottom portion of your screen. Third down and ten for the Steelers. In the flat, the ball is caught for a first down by Lynn Swan. That's beautiful. I mean, he he came down to Bill Bolton. It's all over him. Just hey. playing him like a shadow. They're in a double zone, but man-to-man -man outside on the flanks. And Swan just late falls to the outside, and there's no defense for that. Here goes Bradshaw back. He's letting Swan try to run his pattern. He finds nobody open. He knows Swan's coming back to the outside. Perfect. It was perfect. Down in the knee and up with the ball. A gain on the play. 15 yards and a first down for, for Pittsburgh. Swan now has caught three pa five passes for 45 yards today. First and ten Steelers. Caught a few elbows, too. Got a little mean in the first half. It did indeed. Here's one to Franco Harris. Big guy sees no future upfield, so he turns out of bounds. Short gain. 9.33 to play in the third quarter. Back to New York to Bryant Gumbel. Don out at Shea. The Jets have added another against the New England Patriots. Matt Cavanaugh throws this one downfield. Darrell Ray's second interception of the day, his fifth of the year. He's the NFL leader in that department and brings it back 44 yards for a touchdown. Jets in front 28-14, and Grogan has replaced Cavanaugh. Don? Change of pitchers at Shea. Thank you, Brian. We saw New England last week, John. They looked like a real good-looking football team, but right back to their old ways yeah, now. Yeah, they, they give up 28 points way too often, Bonnie. Long on potential and short on performance this year, the New England Patriots. Franco Harris turns up field on second down and nine and gets down to the 35-yard line. Bruce Huther makes the stop. I think maybe Cleveland uh, is reading the, reading the progress report. The, the Steelers have been effective on second and nine, second and ten all day long running the ball. It's the first time they've been stopped. Are they a predictable team, Pittsburgh? I don't think so. When you've got two wide receivers like Stallworth and Swan, and now as Cunningham's coming along, with this man in your backfield and Bradshaw at quarterback, I'd say they're the most unpredictable team in the game. Unpredictably effective. There are that. Third down and five now. Russell Davis in the backfield. A long five. Bradshaw looks to throw in the flat. Misconnection. Starworth was running a in pattern. And the ball, as you saw, went out and incomplete. Be interested to see if they if they try a field goal here. They say the trout has a strong leg. Not Cole Strong. <laughs> yeah, they're going to send Colquitt out. He's placed the ball well. You remember earlier when he kicked one out of bounds, angled it. Long way to go, and it's a tight ball game. 10 7 Pittsburgh leads. It's really something when they go to Cleveland. 30,000 Steeler fans head up the Pennsylvania Pike to the Ohio Pike. And they're situated right in the end zone there. On the yellow and black. <laughs> they don't get 50 yard line <laughs> seats, but they sure do get in there. Well, because this stadium is so much smaller, I think, John, the Browns only get like 500 tickets here in Pittsburgh. High punt by Colquitt. Oh. Look at that thing. Look at that. Boy, that's a masterpiece. That's what helps win football games. Ooh. Wolfley, one of the guards, came down and covered and fell on the ball. Greg Wolfley. So the Cleveland Browns get it back, but not where they'd like to have it. Inside their five yard line. Let's watch Colquitt again. Takes a left turn here and works out perfectly for Pittsburgh. We'll be back after this. New back from New York out in Baltimore. The Bengals have scored their first touchdown of the end of the day. Kenny Anderson using 18 yards and a fine rookie, Chris Collinsworth, to move the Bengals out in front. 10 to 5. Let's go back to Three Rivers. Don Cricky and John Brody. All right, Brian, we're set to go with 8.37 left to play in the third quarter. Cleveland has the ball, but not where they'd like to have it, back inside their five-yard line. But we'll recall, John, that the Pittsburgh Steelers went 97 yards in this game earlier, right from that spot. That's right. And it's, it's right now, it's the job of the Cleveland offensive line to get them out of this hole and let them operate. Charles White, the deep back in the I formation. Throw it. Living dangerously. Uh-oh. He's out of there. He's got some room. And he gets it away and makes the connection out to the 14-yard line. 
Joe Green's talking to Sipe all the way. Danny Fulton coming in the game. Old steamboat cut by the Buffalo Bills, picked up by the Cleveland Browns. Yes. You know, it's really it's it's something when you see an offensive line like both these teams have, which give their quarterback a lot of time when it's really needed. Now he, you know, when you're back in your own end zone and they give you enough time to move around in the pocket, slide out, and you can throw a little ten-yard pass. You've got a group of guys that hang in there. Well, they got out of trouble, got out of jail. Twelve-yard gain. They have a first down out to the 15-yard line. Sight goes to the run. Mike Pruitt turning up field. And a lot of Steelers are there to level him. Lambert came across. Also on the play was Gary Dunn and Robin Cole. Don, when we see him right then, they stopped the run. They stopped it by using a whole lot of people up there. All right. When they do that, they put a real burden on those cornerbacks. And a little bit later down the line, they're going to come to Ozzie Newsom down the field. Ozzie has been a threat. He's been in the end zone on the receiving end of a 29 yard pass play for Cleveland's only score. It's 10 7 this game. Steelers are in the lead. Browns with the ball. Second down and eight coming up. Sipe throws a strike up the field, goes to the 24. Charles White turning back, catches the ball, and Robin Cole promptly puts him down. While we have a moment, let's go back to New York, the NFL 81. Brian? Well, Don, in that Raiders Chiefs game out at Arrowhead, there's been a score predictably enough by the Kansas City. Bill Kennedy, four yards to Henry Marshall. The Raiders now in their 11th quarter of shutout ball. Don? You could get some long odds on that. The Raiders shut out through 11 quarters. Well, when you got Mark Van Egan and Bob Chandler out, it really they didn't realize how valuable those two products were to the Oakland offense. I did, I did think they'd score something, but... Uh... Third down and one now. Charles White over the top had to get to the 30 yard line the 25 yard line just to cross it Lambert came over the top to greet him. They gave him a good spot. Looks yeah. like he has it. Yep. So the Browns get out of trouble you'll recall this started inside their five yard line they get the first down with 617 left to play. Third quarter Steelers in the lead 10-7. Robin Cole, Jack Lambert, Jack Ham, the linebackers for Pittsburgh. We noticed Rucker's back in there, too. That's sucking it up. Yeah, Reggie was banged up. You remember that incomplete pass early. He's wide to the left. Sipe has taken a look to the right side. Now he has got a lot of time. He throws and gets Ozzie Newsom. Open field for Ozzie. A foot race down the sideline, and Newsom has the big gainer ripped off for Cleveland. Down to the 41 yard line of the Steelers. What a play Newsom made. We've got a, we've got a Brown down. Greg Pruitt. Oh, man. But take a look. Here's a Newsom. Now, this is what a great tight end does. He sees Sipes in a, in a problem. He was going down the field the other way. He stops, watches Brian come out. No linebacker's going to stay with Ozzie Newsom if you give the quarterback a little bit of time. He breaks open, gets him a big game. Ozzie having a big day. Here it is again as that play was good for 34 yeah. yards. And it's, it's a good job on Sipes' part to see him, but... Look at Newsom. He comes right into Sipes' vision, gives him a perfect a shot. That's what coordination's about. And that was well coordinated as the Browns get the big gainer. Now trailing by three. They're on the Cleveland side, the Pittsburgh side of the field, down to the 41 yard line. Lauren Taves comes in the game now. He plays the pass a little better. He's at the right linebacker spot. First and 10, pitch back to Charles White. Down inside the 40 to the 38 yard line. 535 left to play. Third quarter. Let's go back to New York. Ryan? Well, Don, we just showed you Kenny Anderson of the Bengals hitting one rookie, Chris Collinsworth, for a touchdown. Here he is hitting the other number one pick since that he made this year, David Verser out of Kansas. It's now 17 5 Bengals. Don? So the uh, top draft choices are the Cincinnati Bengals. A couple of good pass catchers. Yes, sir. Of course, they are tied for the lead in the AFC Central through the first five weeks of play, along with Pittsburgh and Houston. Now it's second down and eight for Cleveland. 38-yard line. Oh. Slap back to Brian Sipe. Oh, he's banging his hands. He had a guy open, Charles White, coming out of the backfield. Wes, you know, what surprises me is that Charles White runs as good a, good a patterns as he does. At SC, they don't ask him to run patterns. And it's funny how all those tailbacks from out there have become good pass receivers. He made a beautiful move on hand to come wide open. 
Great line play stopped it. Remember earlier today, Sight threw over the middle. Joe Green got a hand on it, tipped the ball as Cleveland was driving, and Robin Cole, or Dur Winston, came up with the interception. Third down and eight coming up. Steeler fans exhort that Pittsburgh Steeler defense to turn back the Browns. Sight will be pitching. Big rush. Ryan Sight gets it away. Intentional grounding, it looks like. Penalty marker goes down. So I'm saying I had a guy over there. Yeah, he had him over there, but he wasn't trying to hit him. <laughs> I can understand his complaining because he had a man there, but I mean, it's up to the official to check the intent of the quarterback. Now, anybody in his right mind knows Brian Seif was throwing that ball away. Sometimes you get away from it, but this is why he's throwing it away. Take a look at Kors. He's flying in there, putting pressure on Seif. A good call. I should say a correct call. And one the Steelers are beneficiaries of because now Steve Cox is on the field for Cleveland to punt the ball. Jim Smith, who almost never fair catches, is back to return it for Pittsburgh. There's Steve Cox and there's Jim Smith. And the game clock shows 454 left to play in the third quarter. 10-7 Pittsburgh. Don Crickey with John Brody, Three River Stadium, beautiful sunshiny October day as these longtime rivals meeting for the 63rd time. Bad punt, but it was angled. Let's see if it hops out right about the 20. So there, the Steelers will go on offense first and 10 with 4.46 to play in the third quarter. Steelers holding to that three point lead. They'll be back after this. That's so Greg Pruitt, who got one in the eye just a bit ago. And boy, those are painful. As long as it's not his knee, he's had those knee problems. Up the middle they go. Pittsburgh Steelers go to the run. Frankie Pollard is back in the game. This series over the years has turned up some spectacular upsets. Maybe the most spectacular of all was back in 64 when the Cleveland Browns were on their way to a National Football League championship that year. Pittsburgh went to Cleveland. Everybody was hurt on the Steelers. But the fullback wasn't a guy you remember John John Henry Johnson turned loose for over 200 yards and the Steelers won in a walk. You're never quite sure what's going to happen when it's the Steelers and the Browns. Second down and five now running in very well is Franco Harris looking to put that juke move on. He deked the safety and went ahead to cross the 40 and you notice they've gone away from their traps. That's the first time I've ever seen that pitch where you fake it to the halfback and fly it out to Franco. I that's a play that I have never seen. Bradshaw call now obviously they said hey if they're taking away our traps they've got to be keeping their interior linemen in close okay we can get pursued out of out of Franco and run them against the linebacker and see what comes out what came out was a 16 yard gain for the Steelers first and 10 at their 42 <laughs> Franco tries the middle and there's not a thing there the middle guard Henry Bradley that's what was there <laughs> yep. They say Henry John plays every down like it's his last one. He really works at it. Was driving a truck in Cleveland a couple of years ago. He is he is a rare one, and he hasn't he hasn't been given an awful lot of recognition yet. Lyle Alzado is the is the star of the defensive three, but he's played very well today, and he's got a tough man to handle in Mike Webster. Marshall Harris at the left end, Elzado at the right, Bradley the middle guard, Bradshaw in second and eight throws. Man is open, Frank Pollard ahead for a first down. He's to the 46 yard line. The game clocked down to 250 to go in the third quarter, an 11 yard gain. Good to see him back. You remember, he lacerated an arm in the first half. That's right. Now, you can see what a big man he is, and, and he hasn't caught many balls, but he runs good patterns. You take a look there. He didn't go out too early. He brought it down the field, gave Bradshaw a chance to set up, hit him right on the break, and held on. Western Pennsylvania it's football territory they grow football players in this part of the world There's great high school teams from towns like Manesson and Aliquippa Charleroi and Beaver Falls McKees Rocks McKees Port the big one this way this year is Mount Lebanon handoff goes to Pollard down to the 41 yard line Bradshaw mixing it up real well right now Don Yes, he is. He's got a whole wealth of plays. He is a confident guy, Terry Bradshaw. I guess you would be when you've had the success he's had. Only got quarterback more championship teams was Bart Starr. Sid Luckman quarterback 
four Bear Championship teams, as Terry's done here in Pittsburgh, four championship teams. He's back to having fun playing football. The last year or so, I'm not sure he was. But right now he is, and that's why I think he's as effective as he is. Out to Pollard. Blocker is there in front of him, Wolfley. Pollard cuts back on second down and five. He gets down inside the 40 to about the 38-yard line. Bruce Huther and Marshall Harris hit him. Big play coming up. This can get him right into field goal territory at the minimum, or it could be a change of possession if they don't pick it up. The Steelers holding to a three-point lead the way it stood at the half. We're down to 108 left to play. His leg could be a decider in this game. It, it is the difference in the lead right now, the field goal by Trout earlier. Third down and two for Pittsburgh. Pollard and Franco Harris are the runners. Going to throw. Swing pass out to Franco. Oh. Too high. And Terry came in high. And he knows it. And so the Brown defense holds. That'll bring up fourth down. Very important series for the Cleveland Browns coming up now. That was a very important play. Bradshaw made a bad throw, and you could see he did not like the throw he just made. He had Franco for a first down and overthrew him. He doesn't do that very often. No, he is not. Had a few misconnections though with the pass patterns today, which you don't usually see with Pittsburgh. Yeah, and Terry's throwing a few balls high, but he's throwing the ball real well. He's uh, he's in, in good stride. I don't think Dino Hall is back for Cleveland's going to let this hop. We remember what Colcliffe did the last time, put that left turn on the ball, and it was down to the three. This one will be no problem for Cleveland. That's into the end zone, touchback out to the 20, and the Browns go on offense there, first and 10. Greg Colquitt had a great punt two punts ago, not so great one this time, and here's his reaction. Well, you can tell. He knows he's got to get it in good field position. He gets too much foot on the ball. The ball goes in the end zone, and he don't like it. You do not win them all, and we'll be back at Pittsburgh after this. All right, Bryant, we're set now with 38 seconds to go in the third quarter. The Browns, as you see last year, with a victory in Cleveland by one point. We saw that game, John, and it was something. Oh, boy. <laughs> Wind whipping in off the lake on a cold, cold November day, and Cleveland on its way to an AFC Central Championship. Steelers won here on the field goal. Dropping to throw is Brian Sipe over the middle. He throws, and the ball is taken away. A hit right on time. Jack Ham, who might be as good covering the pass as anybody they've ever had out there. I'd say he is better. I mean, it's. He just was all over Newsom. Newsom usually can shake a linebacker. He couldn't shake any part of him. Yep, 0 for 11. Been a lot of long bus rides home. Two hours and 20 minutes down the you pike. Know, the funny thing is, Don, a lot of people talk about jinxes. I don't really think it's a jinx at all. That's for, for we in the media to deal with. But it's been a mismatch until the last three or four years, Pittsburgh against Cleveland. Now they're, now they're on even terms. Sipe is doing a great job getting away. Now he throws, and it's going to be lost, oh. almost intercepted by Bob Coors. The defensive end almost had the ball as Brian Sipe was running for his life. And I think he almost lost it, but he did get a penalty call. And he is Sipe hurt. Is down. You remember last week against the Rams, he was hit hard and suffered a mild concussion. Was out very briefly, so he's probably... The after effects of that, there's a tensional roughing personal well, foul. What you do is you leave yourself up for grabs. When you throw across your body the way he did on that play, you've got to use so much energy to move the ball across your body, throwing it back into the middle of the field, that it's like force against force. If somebody hits you while you're throwing, and I mean, it smarts. I'm sure Brian will be back, but he took an awful good lick. And the Steelers were called for it, so the Browns are do get a first down on the penalty. We may we may get to see the end of it. He does a good job by getting rid of Ham. He knows they're in a blitz. If he gets outside of this blitz, he'll, he expects to find an open receiver. When he does, now he tries to make a real good play. You see Lambert coming. Hype hung in there to throw it. Lambert hit him in the head and got the penalty. Paul McDonald in the game, second-year quarterback from Southern California. The left-hander goes to the run to a guy he teamed up with on a national championship team at USC, Charles White. Run goes across the 35 out to the 37-yard line. Bob Coors and another flag. Coors on the tackle. 
Joe D. Joe DeLamelier a little slow getting up. Looks like against Cleveland John. 20 seconds left in the third quarter. 10-7 game, just as it stood at the half. Pittsburgh Steelers in the lead. Offense, number 68. Robert E. Jackson, the left guard, called for a hold. Brian Seip being attended to. They say it's his left shoulder, Don, and it happened when he fell because he took a good lick, but that isn't what does it. It's, it's when you hit the ground. That, uh, well, the team doctor shining a light in his eyes. They're checking out to see if he didn't get a head injury. Robin Cole makes the tackle on the play. Running with the ball was Pruitt, the fullback. What's your phone number, Brian? Oh, yeah. Things like that. I used to get a kick out of it when they put two or three fingers up. So I can read how many fingers are up. That doesn't mean I can play. <laughs> That's the end of the third quarter. The score is the Pittsburgh Steelers 10, the Cleveland Browns 7. We'll be right back. Thank you, Byron. A most amazing number coming in off the Oakland Raiders threat past three performances. The defending Super Bowl champions shut out now. Incredible. Yeah, it is. Brian Seip being attended to took a hard lick a while ago. You felt that pain and that confusion as you go to the sideline, John. And here's Paul McDonald throwing. The lofts went out. He was going for Calvin Hill, who's in the game for the first time. Calvin Hill coming out of the backfield. You know what it's like to get a concussion and try to play. Well, you do, and, and McDonald's in a tough spot now. I can remember, it's funny, you sit there and, and you, I mentioned somebody putting fingers in front of your face. Uh, you can read the fingers. The problem is, I'm sure Brian is a little foggy right now. I remember I could read the fingers once. Went in against Baltimore in a must-win game. Called a play we didn't have. Picked up a safety. We lost the ball game by two points. So that's, that's a time when it's Sam's responsibility to to recognize whether or not it's okay for Brian to play. That's right. At that point, it's not the quarterback's decision if he can play. It's the coach's. And Sam goes to his backup, McDonald. Standing in against a big rush. He gets it away. Rucker is out there just oh. off his fingertips. Very well-thrown ball, Donnie. Just about an inch or two on the outstretched fingers of Rucker. Well-run pattern and a well-thrown ball just came up a little empty. McDonald doesn't give any of the opposition as a collegian at Southern California. He set what still stands as an NCAA record, the lowest percentage of interceptions in a career. Was drafted in the fourth round. Browns think down the line he's going to be a winning player like Brian Seip is now. Brian's still a young man, though, as the punt is unloaded upon by Cox. Jim Smith, he does like to return him. Looking for a picket line to form and some blockers in the Browns cover very nicely just across their 25 yard line. The Steelers get the ball 47 yard punt and virtually no return. Fourth quarter underway here at Three Rivers will be back. It's not good. So it looks John like McDonald's going to go the rest of the way in this game. Donnie I don't think there's any doubt about it. He's got to go the rest of the game. In fact Brian Seif I thought was leaving the ballpark. I know he's walking right now and he's being attended to. Now he sat down again. I guess he doesn't want to leave, but uh, those concussions can reoccur so easily once you get the first one. That's why Staubach retired. Here's a pitch complete to Benny Cunningham. On a first and ten play, the big tight end gets out to the 45-yard line. 16-yard gain. The scheduling uh, next week the Browns go back to Cleveland Stadium New Orleans comes to town then Baltimore follows then they're at Buffalo for a big one with their longtime rivals the Bills dating all the way back to the old All-American Football League and then you look at you look at, at Cleveland they get by today if they happen to get a win their season lightens up a little for them and they've got a real they've got a real shot Franco Harris running across the 45 yard line and a first down play gets to the 48. The Steelers go to Cincinnati next week. A game that'll be featured on many of these NBC stations. Then Houston comes to Pittsburgh. 49ers follow, and your old club isn't bad, John. And they're getting better every day. They just acquired uh, Fred Dean. They got Jack Reynolds in the offseason. Johnny Davis from my from uh, down in Florida. I mean, Walsh is putting together a good group. And they go to Cleveland to the Steelers later in the season. Second down and seven now for the Pittsburgh Steelers still leading as they did at the half ten to seven. Bradshaw home run ball man is open Lynn Swan is there look at the catch by Lynn Swan. Donnie, 
you know, everybody in the house was smiling but Swan. He's been in a battle all day long. He just wanted to make up for the one that he let get away earlier in the ball game. Bradshaw throws it about as well as he can right here. Put the ball just over Bolton's head, took a swipe and missed it. That's like being a catcher with a bat going by your face. You've got to have excellent attention to bring those kind down. Another replay of it. 44 yard gainer on the play. Goes up in the air like Nureyev and comes down with the ball. And the Steelers have the ball first and 10 at the Cleveland round seven yard line. Pollard, there's room to run, touchdown Pittsburgh. Don, it's amazing. I think the I think the, the breaks have gone about even, but they have been extremely critical. Offensive holding number 52. No touchdown. The picture changes dramatically with that penalty. Number 52, Mike Webster, sitting on Bradley. Got his arm hooked under Bradley's. Ran him clear into the cheap seats. They call him for holding. The ball is set back to the 12-yard line. And there it'll be first down and goal for Pittsburgh. Steelers leading the game 10-7 early in the fourth quarter. Bradshaw has time. But he doesn't have a receiver. Now he does. Puts it up. Oh, and for Dixon might have gone 98 yards for a touchdown. The rookie from Southern Mississippi had his hands on the ball and lost it. And for Dixon had a clear track the other way, and he can fly. Don, here's something that's rare. Now we're going to see Dixon almost pick the ball off. But the penalty previous to that was a, was only really a five yard penalty because Webster had moved him so far down the field that he had him about six yards deep and they went from the, the, the point of the infraction. Second down and goal Pittsburgh. Twelve yard line at Cleveland Steelers by three in the fourth quarter. Pollard running up the middle takes the ball inside the ten and down to the nine and third down comes up. Of course, if the Steelers do get the field goal, if they don't take it in, they'd go up by six. Cleveland would have to score a touchdown on an extra point. You know, people could easily criticize that call, second down and about 12 to go. But if you recall on second down, they've been very effective running, running little trap plays for 12 and 15 yards at a crack. So it didn't work and it looked bad, but it wasn't a bad thought. They like that play. 33 toss, 32 toss, trap block. Third down and goal, nine yard line. Bradshaw with wide receivers set to either side, three of them ready to run patterns. Alzado leaves early, penalty markers down. Bradshaw might have a free play. He does. Larry Brown. Nearest to the ball. Let's see what this is now. It's against Cleveland, according to the initial signal from Ray Penny, the left tackle of Pittsburgh. <laughs> He doesn't count, though. Well, by the time he got out of his stance, uh, Alzado was back in Bradshaw's face. 11 minutes, 11 seconds left to go in the game. And you know in these games over the years, every second is counted so many times. Sometimes we need an extra time. Now the ball's inside the five. What do we do here, John Brody? Defense was offside. Well, I think if you're Bradshaw, he's got as much arsenal down there as any player in the game, right? If he, I look for him to go to either Stallworth or Swan. I really do. On a one-on-one -on -one pattern. They're both coming out to the left in the tight end. Benny Cunningham is wide to the right. That's a load for Ron Bolton to handle. 6'6", 260-pound Benny Cunningham. Third and goal from the four. Uh, there was motion at right guard. Looked like Corson pulled up. So the Browns might get the yardage back they just lost. They're getting a little jumpy. That's if like this gives you reason to be a little jumpy. That's right. All start 77. Corson started to pull up the pass block. Cunningham comes out. Jim Smith goes in. So it's third and goal from just inside the 10 yard line. You almost it's almost better if you're going to throw the ball to have 10 to go rather than five because you have a little more room to operate.
Bradshaw throws the ball is caught but Starworth is knocked down at the seven covering the play right there was the rookie Hanford Dixon and the field goal unit comes out with the Steelers holding to a three-point lead you know Hanford Dixon's been put in a position four or five times today where he's been one-on-one -on -one with Starworth and he hasn't come out badly he's been battling him yes. every play all day they haven't beaten him bad Bradshaw has thrown the ball 31 times has completed 19 so far for 201 yards try with a field goal attempt 23 yarder He's up and good. Took him a while to decide, but it is good. And the Steelers open up a 13 to 7 lead with a long way to go. 10 25 left to play. So now the Browns are ready to get the ball back. We'll see what they do when they come back. John Brody, this is Don Crickey back at Pittsburgh. Steelers leading 13 to 7 on the 23-yard field goal. Kick it off. It hops down to the goal line. And here comes Dino Hall. Puts his head down. Taken down by Tunch Ilkin. The casualty list grows. Jack Ham, who returned as a starter today after missing eight weeks as a starter. He came back briefly last week for a few plays against New Orleans. Troubled by a left knee injury. That is a costly injury to the Steelers. And on the other side. The great quarterback of the Cleveland Browns, Brian Sipe, out with a concussion. That's him with his head just protruding out inside that fellow's shirt. And he he is not going to play anymore today. Browns have not been a fourth quarter team, as that graphic certainly illustrates. You know, Don, it's really funny how things change. They haven't been, just as you said. Last year and the year before, that's what they were as a fourth quarter. Yeah, that's right. The cardiac kids, they used to win them when it was on the line in the closing moments. First and ten, Cleveland. To the run, and there's nothing there. Pittsburgh shuts it down. Big Joe Green playing with a vengeance again in his 13th year. We got a whole we got a whole batch walking off the field. Donnie Shell's hurt. Jack Ham's hurt. They're both going into the locker room. One good thing about Ham's injury, if there's anything good about it, is the fact he's walking off without a real noticeable limp. Looks like a hamstring for him. Yeah. Well, listen, they leave their bodies out there in this game. <laughs> it's something. You, you'll notice Pittsburgh's playing with a lot of linemen right now, forcing McDonald to throw. He does it, just misses the connection to Calvin Hill. Paul McDonald standing in against a big rush. And almost got it away. That'll bring up third down and nine. McDonald 0 for 3 since he's come in for Brian Sipe. Yeah, less points this year for Cleveland. Not that many less, but it does make a difference. Yeah, not enough. That's their problem. They have been superior in the late play in the past couple of years, and this year they've been very ordinary, and it's, it's cost them. Big play for Cleveland. Browns trailing in the game 13 to 7. Third down and 9. McDonald has a problem. He gets it away. It's incomplete. And Cleveland's going to have to punt the ball back to the Steelers. Tell you what, he didn't he didn't get anybody there, but he hangs in there. A standing in salute of the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Don't forget coming up up after this game. National League divisional playoff action. You'll see either Montreal at Philadelphia in the fifth game there or the Astros and the Dodgers from Dodger Stadium. Coming up next on NBC at 4 o'clock Eastern Time. Here's the punt. Jim Smith takes it at his 39. Darts ahead. The 45. Caught and thrown back. Coming up to make the play was Lawrence Johnson. So the Steelers have the ball back with 9.19 left to play in the game. A 38-yard punt, a six-yard return. Steelers ready to go when we come back. For the third week in a row, we'll get wonder, to the rest of us. I wonder how long it's been since anybody's been shut out three weeks in a row, let alone the Super Bowl champs. Bradshaw throws, Cunningham catches, and loses the ball then at the 41. The scoreboard. Atlanta was down 13-0. Then one ahead, then L.A. came back and took a lead. Now Atlanta is. Forget the defense. 
New Orleans got in front seven nothing. That might have been the worst thing they could do. It got the Eagles angry. <laughs> Philadelphia every day. Cincinnati looking to hold to its share of the AFC Central lead, beating the Colts, who seem to come close every week but don't win. Houston, 14 10 now over Seattle in the game that's gone back and forth. That makes this game right here that much more important for the Browns. They'd be two, two games back to everybody if they can't get seven points in the next 10 minutes. Pollard runs the ball on second down and 10. He crosses midfield and gets down to the 49 yard line. Six yard gain. Eddie Johnson and Don Good tackled him. Tampa Bay was behind Green Bay 7 0. Now the Buccaneers have rallied back to take a rather commanding lead, although it's still in the third quarter. Washington, they're uh, very much in the Marcus Johnson, what's his name? Marcus uh, Allen role. Sweepstakes for that great back from Southern California. And old number 17 is hurting. That's the second time in two weeks for him, too, Don. Brian Sipe on the sideline with a concussion, third and five, swing pass. Russell Davis short arms the ball as the defense comes up. Well, we might have had another concussion if he caught it. <laughs> you can see Ritigliano talking to McDonald now. At SC, John Robinson said that this kid has as much poise as anybody he's ever seen, and he's given me no reason to see that he doesn't. Good thrower. Hangs in there, and he's getting his first real shot. He's been in the big games, though. Quarterback two Rose Bowl championship teams and one national championship team. Dino Hall is back as a single safety for Cleveland, standing at his 10. Cole quit. Brown set up a return. Don't rush the punter much. Cole quit angles. Oh, Dino Hall catches the ball. Cleveland's got a long way to go. Calvin Sweeney was right on top of him. So Colquitt delivers another big punt play for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Browns have the ball when we return to Three River Stadium. Benny Cunningham needing some adjustments on one of the shoes he wears out in this artificial turf field at Three River Stadium. He's made some big plays for the Pittsburgh Steelers. The last big play for the Steelers was by the punter Colquitt as he's pinned the Browns back at their five yard line and they trail 13 to seven. Pittsburgh in the lead. By six points, you saw the game clock, 8.17 to play. Henley Mockers go down as Pruitt runs into the line and not very far. Gary Dunn met him right away, 67. Boy, you couldn't, you couldn't have a kid with his back up against the wall any more than McDonald does. Well, it's backed up a little more now, John. I doubt if they'll take the penalty. Rather have that down go by, huh? Well, yeah, but they may have. What they may have done is they called the play dead so quick. I think it was a whistle that started offense. before the play ball was snapped. No option in that case. Yep. Set back just outside the two. So it's going to be first down and about 13 yards to go for the first down. McDonald goes into the end zone, throws it out to Charles White. Lauren Taves gets him as he crosses the 10. Good gain on the play. That was McDonald's first completion of this day. And the season. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Steelers and the National Football League is prohibited. Donnie, we were talking about McDonald having his back up against the wall. He's out of options. That's his problem. He's got two of his best wide receivers hurt. Rucker. And, and also Logan. Now he's got to go to his backs, and it takes them a little time to get out and get open. So, I mean, that's all he can do. Final numbers in from Kansas City, and the Raiders have been shut out again. Second down and four. Cleveland goes to the run, doesn't get the first down. Gary Dunn filled again, made the hit. The linebackers were in quickly. Lauren Taves in there. Washington leading the Chicago Bears 17 0. It's only winless team remaining in the NFL. Saw the great man who runs the Pittsburgh Steelers for so many years, Art Rooney, before the game. He asked him how he likes the Steelers at this point. He said, I'll tell you more after today. He's got to like what he's seeing defensively in particular. Art Modell is counterpart with the Cleveland Browns across the way. Team 0 for 11 since Three Rivers open. Here's a dump pass out, and the Cleveland Browns get the first down as Calvin Hill comes out of the backfield. 
That's a, that's a superb throw. Here, it's, it's a blitz against him. He hangs in there. We mentioned it takes the backs a little time to get out, get into their patterns, and make their break. He had no more time than he took. But he waited for Calvin Hill to get down the field, make his break, threw it right on the break, right where it had to be thrown. Well done. It was very well done. It goes out to the 22-yard line, so the Browns stay alive with this drive. First down, 10, and they're 22. And you notice they're running plays in and out for McDonald. Puts a little burden on a team that isn't used to doing that. McDonald, whose team needs a touchdown, throws long. Oh! Very nearly an interception. The antenna receiver did a good job stripping Mel Blunt of the ball. Calvin Hill. Jeez, that's the toughest thing a back can do, Don. He's running down the field. He's beating the linebacker, and the ball is coming nice and soft. He doesn't, have, he doesn't wonder whether or not they're coming. He just doesn't know who. You, you sit there and put that ball up for grabs over the top of a linebacker against a team like Pittsburgh that pursues as they do. Look at this. Mm. J.T. Thomas and Mel Blunt, they all meet. Incomplete pass at second down and 10 now for the Cleveland Browns. Over the middle, a little too high for Kelvin Hill. Kelvin's a big target. Quite a lot of balls in his years. 6-4. And he's a tough, tough man. Yes, he, he was a great running back, and in his later years, he's been an outstanding receiver. Look at this. If he didn't stumble, I think he'd, he'd have had the ball. Tough, tough man on the football field. As fine a gentleman, I think, as you'll meet in this game. It's true. Across the 22-yard line, almost to the 23. It is now third down and 10 for the Cleveland Browns. They trail in the game 13 to 7. He's got to go to his wide receivers now. Defensive game in the second half. Only points, a 23-yard field goal not that long ago. Here they come. Good reception. Might be a first down. It is. Ozzie Newsom comes back at the ball right where he needed to go out to the 33-yard line. Tell you, he's hanging in there. They're putting a the blitz on him, trying to get something done. Newsom makes a play. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation again. Whenever they're blitzing it, that's the only option you have. Puts the ball where it has to be thrown, and Newsom comes up with it. And comes up with it for the fourth time. 99 yards receiving for a big Aussie today. There's the game clock ticking down. Try to handicap that one. Atlanta leading now by a point, 35-34, 8.23 left. Leroy Irvin has run back two punts for touchdowns for Los Angeles. Here's a throw to Dave Logan. Bad ribs and all. Logan's across midfield. He has another first down for the Cleveland Browns. And what happens? You suck it up. You go in there. You've got a bad rib. Where do they hit you? Right in the rib. That's it for him. Boy, that's tough. He slept sitting up for a whole week. He said, you want to try something that's hard to do, try that when you can't breathe. Yeah, that was the first week. Last week, it just pained. Now he'll be sitting up for another one. Tell you what, no place for sympathy out here, but you have a bad rib, that's where you're going to get it. That's right where it was hurting him. Left ribs. But the Browns are alive very much in the fourth quarter. First down and 10 for Cleveland, 46-yard line of Pittsburgh. Charles White, nothing there. Second down and nine from the 45. And the game clock is a ticking down to 448 running. Joe Green has been holding up that middle very well in the second half. Both sides have lost a lot of troops in this one. Jack Ham's gone off. Donnie Shell, two Pro Bowl players in the defense for Pittsburgh. They're not losing pawns either. No, everybody goes. All pros. They start popping like this, something's got to give, and it has. 4.20 left to play. Second and nine. McDonald's going to run. Now he throws, and Charles White was there as J.T. Thomas backed off him, but it goes incomplete. McDonald takes a pop. Well, he took a pop, and if he'd just been a little quick to rea quicker reacting, he'd have hit Charles White on the dead run. There was nobody around him. It was a very alert look. Now he's trying to make a move. He's trying to create some time. He looks up to see if we can get to White. That's what happens when you're on the run. You Got to think the computer made a mistake when this kid is left until the fourth round in the draft. The record he compiled as a college player. Third down and nine now. Big, big down for the Browns and the Steelers. 
There's the rush. There's the throw. It's complete. And Mike Pruitt gets ahead for a first down for Cleveland. He's inside the 35-yard line. And the clock is down to four minutes to go in running. Boy, that was that was alert. He was trying to go to Ozzie Newsom. They were very close together. Ozzie Newsom's having a heck of a time getting clean right now. You can see he turns around after he'd thrown the ball, throws it, throws it to Pruitt, who picks up the first down. They're, they're just hanging in there. They started this drive, remember, inside their own five-yard line. That's what you call hanging in there. They're doing all of that. The Browns have their following here. And they've got something to cheer about now as Cleveland's on the march. Fourth quarter, first and ten, trailing by six. End around Ozzie Newsom. Look at him rip it off. Ozzie Newsom comes inside the 25 and takes it down to the 20. And the Browns are challenging. Touchdown, an extra point, and they would go ahead. And the game clock keeps on winding down to 310 and running. Good fake. Yep. Take a look. This play set up like if these two fellas get their blocks, he can sit on Thomas. If he'd have gotten that block, it would have allowed Rucker to get the man down the field and Blunt might have taken it in. You recall this drive started back at the five yard line of the Cleveland Browns after Dino Hall fielded the punt was immediately down. 13 7 the score. Pittsburgh in the lead, but now the Steeler defense being challenged by young Paul McDonald. Taking a look, he throws, he's got another receiver. It's Calvin Hill, he's inside the 15-yard line. I'll tell you, I'm giving Sam Ritigliano some credit. He's not accustomed to calling plays from the sideline, shuttling in people. He's doing it, and he's doing it very effectively. He's given, he's given uh, McDonald time to get the play, get out of the huddle, take a look at the line of scrimmage. And that, there's, it's a lot more complicated to do that than it appears. Bet it is. As you were pointing out earlier, John, that Brian Sutton, one of the few quarterbacks that's still calling his own plays. Ian Bradshaw. Now, as you see, McDonald's totals for the days. We have a 13-7 game. And now here comes another one of those fantastic finishes. Tom Dempsey will do the impossible. Kick a 63-yard field goal. Joe Scarpetti gets the ball down. Dempsey caught it solid. And it's... It's good! Tom Dempsey has just kicked a 63-yard field goal. With no time left on the clock, the Saints beat the Lions 19-17. What a game we have going at Three Rivers Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The home of the champions of recent years, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Most famous address in pro football. And right now, the Cleveland Browns, their arch rivals, are challenging for what could be a tying touchdown with a subsequent extra point. It would be Cleveland in the lead. Two minutes to play. Second down coming up. Paul McDonald has come in at quarterback for Cleveland, replacing the injured Brian Sipe. He's out with a mild concussion. Second down and two. McDonald throws into the end zone. It's intercepted. J.T. Thomas intercepts the ball. A tip ball. It was so nearly a touchdown. The Steeler defense rises up. It's not over yet, though. It isn't over, but it's, it's just about over because... There's a situation. You take a team 84 yards down the field. You haven't got any points on the board. It's the first decision he's made in the wrong manner. Tries to make a great play to Ozzie Newsom. JT oh, Thomas makes man. the great play, and they've got the ball back. What a game, just like they always are when it's the Browns and the Steelers will come down for the stretch run right after this. In Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Steelers come out of the huddle, holding to a 13-7 lead. Only three points in the second half. They go to the run to run the clock. The play that stopped the Browns when they were down close. We'll watch again. Well, you can, you're can you taking a look from the, from the inside the end zone. McDonald tries to make a great play when he moves a little to his left to get to Ozzie Newsom. He really wasn't open. It looked like he was more open than in actuality he was. J.T. Thomas makes a great play to pick off the interception. So a break in the action, a timeout is called with 1.43 left to play. We'll be back after this. Ball 
ball turns over to Pittsburgh. 143 left to go. Steelers with the ball, leading by six. Second and four. Pollard, they're going for the ball to Cleveland Browns. He gets up. Cleveland calls another timeout. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Don Olmeyer. The coordinating producer of NFL football is Ted Nathanson. Today's telecast was produced by Larry Cirillo, directed by Ted Nathanson. Technical director Steve Semino, associate director Ray Vanassi. Don, I'd like to mention something. Remember early in the third quarter when we see Brian Seip going off the ball, off the ballpark, he called a timeout rather than take a five-yard penalty early in the third quarter. Well, they've run out of timeouts now. They've got a minute and 38 seconds left. They may get the ball back, but they'll get it back with less than 40 seconds to play, and they will also have no timeouts. So things are looking extremely dismal at this point. Ryan Seip leaves the playing field, KO'd by a mild concussion. We welcome those of you who have just joined us. This is Don Crickey with John Brody, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Steelers and the Browns hooked up in another great one. Pittsburgh holding to a 13 to 7 lead. The Browns challenged a moment ago with what would have been possibly a winning touchdown. But J.T. Thomas picked off a tip ball in the end zone. Third Cleveland turnover of the game. Brian Seif, the great quarterback for the Browns, had to leave the game in the third quarter. Troubled by a mild concussion. Paul McDonald, a young player in the second year, is in a quarterback when Cleveland's on offense. Right now, the Steelers are running the clock. It's down to 132 left to play. As Pittsburgh goes to the run, and Bradshaw now at the timeout call comes over to the sideline. I'm not believing he called timeout. For those of you just joined us, we're going to just join us. We'll take a look again now at that intercepted ball a short time ago. Here's the play when it looked like the Browns. They'd driven 84 yards to this point. And this is the only bad decision that McDonald made in the whole darn drive. Just tried to make a great play out of a bad situation, and you don't do that very often against Pittsburgh. We surely are in Steeler country. The Pittsburgh Steelers now ready to punt the ball. Dino Hall is back. Terry Bradshaw, who's quarterback the Steelers all day long. Colt put on loads. Dino Hall back inside his 20. There's some blockers, though. Cuts back up, and Hall goes down the 25-yard line with 38 seconds left to play. 55-yard punt by Craig Colquitt. Baseball playoff action is coming up next here on NBC, the fifth and deciding game in the National League Divisional Series. You'll see either Montreal and the Philadelphia Phillies at Veterans Stadium or the Houston Astros and the L.A. Dodgers at Los Angeles. That's coming up next on NBC. A big day for Sam Rotigliano and his Browns. Time running out, 39 seconds to go. Cleveland with the ball down by six, first and ten. Donald looks, fires over the middle. Ozzie Newsom is there at the 45-yard line. A first down for Cleveland. The Browns sprint up to the new line of scrimmage. So they've got to get the ball off in 10 seconds to have enough time to throw a couple balls in the end zone. Anything they're kept on the field to play with is sayonara for them. 19 seconds to go. McDonald, as the clock winds down, fires. He's got a man open on the sideline. He's inside the 40. Let's see how they call Let's it. See. Rucker has the ball at the 36-yard line. But as you know, the Browns are out of timeouts, and the Pace. clock winds down. Two seconds, they won't get a playoff. Time runs out on the Cleveland Browns, and the Pittsburgh Steelers win again at Three Rivers. And they, I'll tell you, they lost every chance they had with the unnecessary timeout in the third quarter. It was a well-played game, both offensively and defensively. Too many mistakes kept the score low, but both teams played well. They really did. A typical Cleveland-Pittsburgh game, and they've not seen the last of each other this season. In November, 